Welcome to the Transcript Trade Show. I'm your host, Kieran Stewart. And it sounds like someone's got the show on in the background as well. They're that eager to watch it. They're on it and they're watching it as well. <laughs> uh, we've got we've got Nathan Ellington in tonight. He's going to be discussing the Manchester United, Manchester Derby. He's a happy man. We've also got Kevin Parker on. Oh, and he's here. How are I'm you here, doing? Don't worry. <laughs> he's here. He's not hiding. I love that, I'm Kevin. Not hiding. No. no, no, you're not. You're not sitting sitting pretty top of the league still. A minor blip as as you go for the the the, the main. The main trophy, which is the Champions League, surely. But, but yeah, not the on... Manchester trophy, the Premier League trophy. That's <laughs> <all>. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. It's going to be a good one. <sighs> Love it. The gloves right. are off. The gloves are off. Um, we've got a full full house in tonight. We've also joined by Liam Toomey from The Athletic, uh, Chelsea correspondent. Um, and before we get going, can we hit the like and subscribe button? Let everyone know that you like transfer news transfer information football shows football podcasts as well all right thank you very much all right let's go let's go let's go how you doing sir yeah i'm all right uh, good. everyone good, good, good how you doing Jerome? yeah good thank you good thanks good how you doing steve yeah good evening we've got a happy smiling nathan how you doing nathan <laughs> <laughs> How often am I smiling? I'm always smiling. <laughs> <laughs> what have we got next week? It's a different smile. It's a different smile. And Kevin Parker, he's back with us again. Always smiling. How are you doing, Kevin? Yeah, I'm good. Listen, uh, not the best afternoon for City, but I'm, uh, the position that we're in, you can't do anything but be happy. Just find a blip. Move on with it. It is, it is. And, and, and we'll get onto that, get onto that now. Um... We start with you, Nathan. Yeah, Man United. It was a game they needed to win because, look, during during the week, a uh, Crystal Palace game on Wednesday, which was nil nil. You must have been disappointed, and you must have thought to yourself, "Are, are we going to sort of give this second spot away when that's the that's the sort of spot you you're trying to claim as your own?" What happened on Wednesday? Wednesday was just a game to totally forget. It was the worst game of football I've ever seen. I fell asleep in the first half. And then the film just made it even worse when I woke up. So I was just like, my gosh, this is this is so diabolical. No chances, no urgency. There was nothing. There was nothing to our game. And Ole didn't bring on anyone really to try and mix it up as well. And it was just one of the games where you just think, you know what, let's just forget about it and we have to go again. Uh, and that was really what it was. I just was disappointed. I wasted 90 minutes of my life away watching that game. So... Absolute glowing endorsement. So anyone that didn't see the Crystal Palace Manchester United game, just make sure you go and watch Don't the watch full it. full ninety minutes because I'm definitely going to go after that. Um, <laughs> but then we got on today, and what was your feeling before the game? You, you I was already I was already thinking we're going to lose at least three 0 uh, <laughs> Okay, hundred percent. I was thinking fair, we ain't winning this game. We've been playing so badly for over the last so many games. Um, mm -hmm. We haven't really you know gone at anyone and done anything recently so and then i just it did cast my mind back and think you know what that's the same kind of team that really did cause show i wanted to see dan james in the team today i was actually mm -hmm. thinking you know what we need to have him and his working his hard work um to actually you know cause trouble if we win it and his pace as well added with marshall and rashford i knew that there was always going to be some kind of counter-attack ability and i thought Pep might just think he's really confident now. Now that he's won all them games, he might mm. not bother thinking about what our strengths are anymore and think, you know what, I'll just play our way and we're going to win. But again, he came unstuck against United because he, he fell right into the trap again. I don't know why he does it. Because he should have learned from that not to try and do that and leave us to be able to counter him. But he did. He could have just made it tight and they would have mm -hmm. outplayed us and probably beat us. But he yeah. didn't. And then we went and got, up, got our win. And, so, and 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 two minutes in, Kevin. Uh, uh, two minutes in. If you blinked, you would have missed it. But you must have been thinking, w w what's going on here? The City had plenty of players back. Yet yeah, Gabriel's in and around the area, trying to trying to win back a ball that he'd lost. Yeah. But it it, it it was clumsy in the end. Yeah, listen, it's a definite penalty. But I think the way that City play, they lose the ball, and the first thing they do is try and win it back. Um, yeah. And thirty-four seconds. Um, I mean, you can you can talk about Pep's game plan, but who knows what Pep's game plan would have been? 
United got the ideal uh, start to the game after a minute or so. Um, and that played into United's hands, I think. You know, I think mm. we, apart from the goal, I think we dominated the first half without really creating any real great chances. I think uh, the start of the second half, we came out of the blocks reasonably well. Rodri hit the post. Um, but you know, to go away, as they're always likely to do, and the that we give um, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer credit for is he set the game up very well. That was the one thing I think that City fans were probably always a little bit cautious of that United were going to play the game and play on the break. And um, their best player, probably for the last six weeks or two months, you know, Luke Shaw ended up getting the second goal and it became very difficult from there. I think overall, United deserved the points on the day, but I can't be too disappointed. We've won 21 games on the run. We've not lost a game for 28 games. We're still 11 points clear in the Premier League. You don't want to lose that record to your closest rivals. Mm -hmm. I grew up in an era when winning the derby was the be-all and end-all of my season. And that has changed completely now. Yeah. Manchester United winning the derby is the be-all and end-all of their season, to be honest with you. <laughs> you know, Arne Goldsolskjaer... Not sure about that. He's, <laughs> record, he's got a great record at beating City. It's a shame that he can't use that same record against the other 19 teams. In the <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah. to say that Kevin De Bruyne was slightly off, especially in the first yeah. half. Listen, it's, just didn't help. it's very easy. So I don't think Kevin had a great game. I, I think mm. Raheem was well marshalled by Juan Bissaka again. But As sometimes, always. Sometimes it's very easy to be critical of your own players. I think what you have to do sometimes is just give credit to the opposition. I do yeah. think United yeah. set themselves up very well. And when they got that penalty after one minute, they were absolutely rubbing their hands because that was playing into that was playing into their uh, game their plan. game plan. You know, yeah, yeah. 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 It was always going to be the opportunity for them to break away and get a second mm -hmm. goal. Mm -hmm. Had yeah. the second yeah. goal been City at one-one, who knows? Once that game went to two-nil, uh, the game was dead and buried. But mm -hmm. Pep is right. You know, Pep's after match interview said the talk will be about Manchester United beating Manchester City when the reality is the talk should be City have just ended a 21 match winning uh, sequence and not lost in 28. I, I would not give up winning the derby today <laughs> to be 11 points behind Manchester United. No, no. no. And, 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 and he, he, he has a point but you've also got a Acknowledge the the win when it when it happens on and at, at the time you can you can have the you can have the aftermath of yes um, it's a great run of city has been on it's been ended however the derby is a derby and no no listen I, I think like I said I think United deserve to win today I can't mm -hmm. take anything away from them I think their game plan worked absolutely perfectly it's not the first time Solskjaer's done it he did it last season. He actually, mm. when we beat United in the uh, semi-final of the League Cup last season, he also came to uh, the Etihad after we'd won 3-1 at yes, Old Trafford. And he won 1-0 at the Etihad as well. So he's got that in his locker. But honestly, listen, I grew up, I've grown up in Manchester. I've got three brothers who are United fans. I do not think that they will accept that winning the derby is the be-all and end-all. No, 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 no. No, it's not. It won't. It's not for United. The reality fans, is, at the moment, that's, that's what their season is sort of about. Finishing in the top four and beating Manchester City. And that's yeah, for, yeah, from, from, from the, from the say, blue eye, maybe. You would have to say that should not, that should not be good enough for Manchester United. I'm yeah, actually yeah. delighted that that's what their season is all about. Nathan, surely your season's about progression and 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 taking because this is a team that that the what where where they came last season third or fourth last season second. before that second well it's very very tight I mean this season it's it's about making that gap bigger and, and closing the gap on Manchester City surely of course but United's beyond an end all is basically not that it's basically to get closer to them and then over, overtake them eventually but it's going to be a very difficult thing to do because. Um, you know, City have got too good a squad at the moment. 
Um, but we have to just do what we can, isn't it? And um, it's not for us. We, we will never settle for just winning a, a derby game. That's for sure. Mm. Um, but we, there's nothing we can do. Like City are way, way ahead. Way, way ahead. But it's nice to win your game against um, Derby. I understand it. It is true. But um, same time, we got to then look to next season. Just look at it as you know, coming back from the dead. You know, we were the champions before. Then obviously our squad's gone, and then we have to rebuild. And that's what we've been trying to do since Alex Ferguson left. And um, that's been the struggle. And um, we'll keep trying to do that until we get back to where we belong. And we'll never be satisfied until we're back top of the league. Uh, and that's basically our thing. We're never going to be like. Oh, we're happy to just be in the Champions League or just, you know, win the cup game or win a cup final of some sort. We want to be champions. We want to win things again. And um, obviously, we're working towards that. We're getting better. We're improving. Um, like I said, we, we've got some way to go still. We've got, um, you know, centre-backs to, to bring in, centre defensive midfield, <laughs> winger and a striker to bring in before we can even think about being as close to City. But um, we're working on it. So, how, how, good, how good was Luke Shaw today? He was, he's, he's, he's but I feel great. like I feel like there's there could be more from Luke Shaw. I feel like he's he's doing well and he's doing better, but there's still there's still more. We can still get more from him. He's upped his game massively since um, Teller has come in. Uh, mm-hmm. Pressure on him, and and for me, I was saying before, like I said, he wasn't doing what I wanted to see from him before, but now he's probably the best left back in the league. But who's who's playing better than him? Nobody. So for me, he's definitely playing. No, nobody is playing better than Luke Shaw right now. I see your face, Simon. Of course <laughs> he's going to say. Of course he's going to say that. If you said he was the best midfielder, he'd probably say Thomas no. Partey. No, he might not be the best, best left back, but he's playing the best at the moment. I'll yeah. put him in the team of the season all day. Um, he's definitely upped his game, and I'm really, really happy with him. I'd like to see obviously Juan Bissaka start getting up the wings and, and getting better with his crossing as well. Because his mm-hmm. defensive side is unbelievable. I don't see anyone better defensively than him. But his attacking side, obviously, we need to we need to up that a lot to get mm-hmm. to them levels of world class. So yeah, it's just one of them things where, you know, you've got um City with good players who can get up and put quality balls in and they're good defensively. That's the difference. We've got one player that's good going both ways, one player good on the right side just defensively. Um and then that's where we fall short really, things like that. There's yeah. many other things, but you know what I mean. But sure, yeah. he's doing it for me. I'm happy. Yeah. Uh, as you were saying earlier, Kevin, it, it's hard to be worried about Man City in this. In this has come off an excellent run. Um, that it's just brush this off. Southampton in, in, uh, next, and then and then Fulham after that, and then and then you've got the, the big Champions League game, second leg. Yeah, I think that's what we've just got to do. We've got to brush it off and, and look forward to Wednesday. Um, listen, there's 10 Premier League games left. I think we have to win six out of 10, or we certainly have to lose four to start to worry about things. <laughs> there's nothing and everyone, and, and, and everybody else. And yeah. everybody else. But, um, so um, we, we can't afford to worry about it. As supporters, it affects us greater because the last game we want to lose is the derby. The reality is players will wake up tomorrow morning, hopefully, and think it's not a great day in the office. We've got to change a few things about it. Um, you can't afford to give a penalty away after 34 seconds. Mm. You know, that changed the whole shape of the game. Um, it, that was probably our most difficult game of the season that we have left. We've got to go to Leicester away. but They've got some terrible injuries to prepare at the moment. So mm. I think they're struggling. The game against United was our most difficult game. We've got we've got games against Southampton, Fulham, uh, Newcastle. Um, it's ours to lose now. I think you know we don't often say that as City fans because we don't like to tempt fate a little bit. To be honest with you, but we would have to say now this game is out of the way and we're still. Te- I mean, this at the start of last weekend, we were ten points clear of Manchester United. Yeah. At the end of this weekend, we're eleven points clear of them. So I'm, <laughs> yeah. after, after, after a week, we're in a better situation than we were a week ago. It can only happen so, to City. 
I expect yeah. it to be about 20 points, mate. I expect it to be about 20 points ahead of the end of the season. Listen, as long as it's one point on the final day of the season. <laughs> <laughs> That's all that matters, I promise you. Probably Mr. Will. Gray, have a look at all this grey hair and everything. I'm only 28. <laughs> <laughs> it, was that, it was that year in the first division, that's what it was. <laughs> I'm the second. I'm the, and the second, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but Much and Gladbach, that's, that's got to be a game you feel you could win. And, and surely this has got to be... Like, they've got to push this year and, 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 and not lose to, to, to some teams you shouldn't be losing to. Well, I think the lesson about today's game is that we've got to be prepared to set ourselves up differently. You know, if we're going to win the Champions League or if we're going to get to the final of the Champions League, we we'll are playing teams who are going to play a very similar game to Manchester United today. It's not a criticism, by the way. I'm, I'm trying to give United some credit. They came with a game plan and it worked very, very well for them. And that's the sort of game that we're going to have to expect if we're going to be playing any of the teams that are left in the Champions League. So hopefully that's a lesson that we can learn, that we've got to just be very careful. We've got to take notice of the opposition. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we had 20... Uh, I, didn't, I didn't even realise during the course of the game, but after the game, we had 23 shots during the course of that game today. 23. Oh. Only six of them were on target. Yeah. And, and the reality is none of them look like yeah. score. So... Mm. There are going to be good days and bad days. I think when yeah. you're going to have your bad day, you've just got to be better on your bad days than we were on a bad day today. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I yeah. think Phil Foden should have started, though, yeah, from, from sharp, the start, because yeah. when he came on, you were you were passing it quicker. And Man United were having to work a bit more towards the end of the game. Mm. Even though they kept saying, oh, there's six minutes to go, anything can happen. No, it's done. <laughs> I, don't, I, was actually thinking if they I don't disagree with that. Listen, I think a lot of City fans probably would have started with possibly Foden and Bernardo, but it's very difficult mm. to be critical of Pep. especially. No, it's, on hell, it's a hell of a bench. It's a hell no. of a bench. Um, yeah. Um, do you think... Do you, go on, sorry. sorry, go on. Do you think, think Foden gets enough game time? Yeah, listen, he's 20 years of age, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think Pep has his little observation, and he's mentioned it before, that Pep, sorry, that, that when Phil comes on, that he can't quite dictate the pace of the game as Pep wants uh, him to, and that's okay. because he's 20 years of age. Yeah. Interestingly, I saw an interview with Pep during the course of the week, and City play at this great tempo, but Pep actually said that sometimes you need to slow that tempo down that you need to change the tempo of the game to allow us to play the game we want to. And Phil plays the game at 100 miles an hour. And and that's because he's mm. 20 and because he, he's got all that enthusiasm and all that passion. And I think that Pep just thinks that sometimes he needs to take him out of the game and sit him on the touchline to look at what's going on mm. so that he can greater understand what he actually wants to get from him whilst he's on the field of play. I don't think anybody on that squad probably thinks they get enough game time. But going back mm -hmm. to Simon's point, I think that's because we've got an absolutely fantastic squad. And yeah. the only way that you can try and keep the squad happy is to rotate. And when you rotate, some people will play and some people won't. I was reading today that, you know, some City fans were saying Mares shouldn't have started today and we should have started... Bernardo, but I thought Mares against Wolves was absolutely I fantastic. did well. So, we've got to start Mares today. Yeah, after it's... You, after you lose uh, the game, people will turn around and say, we should have done this, we should have yeah. done that, you know. Yeah. I remember when, you know, listen, I'm so old that we, we played football under Tony Buck and they were called Tony Buck and the Shudders, you know, we should have won, <laughs> won that. It, you, nobody can argue with that. He gets yeah, it wrong. Put a good team out. Good team was put out there. Was good, this and this is a point, I suppose the point I'm trying to make is it's very easy to be critical of what we did. I think mm. sometimes, through gritted teeth, acceptably, sometimes you just have to give credit to the opposition. Yeah. They had a game plan, they came with it, it started fantastically for them, they stuck to their game plan, they ended up winning the game and they deserve to. Let's just mm -hmm. move on. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think, and I think uh, as you said there with, with about Phil Foden, Every, it's, it's the expectation we see the potential we see how good he is we see how good he is when he plays but people forget like the, 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 the people that he's trying to sort of emulate in terms of dictating that play David Silva turned up at Man City when he was 25 
after yeah. years at, at Valencia. Kevin De Bruyne turned up at Man City when he was 25. So he's still got a lot of his development. He's still got... And that comes with experience and time. So Phil Foden's probably, got... Listen, I probably would have played Phil today <clears> because <throat> it was the Manchester derby and he's got all that passion and he's got something about him that would probably mean a little bit more to him yeah. than, than some of the others. But I think the game was... De- the game was decided after, after a minute. The penalty mm. was given. We almost, it was almost as if we were starting that game losing 1-0. Mm. Yeah. You know, yeah. Back, yeah. Back in the leg of the game, we started yeah. losing 1-0 and we, we had to chase a game. It just didn't work. Yeah. Let's you don't want to be in that position against United, to be fair. If it's 0-0, no, no. yeah, you kind exactly. of get a goal in head. I'm like, oh, no, how are we going to get a goal back and then score another now? Uh-huh. So, but, but, that, was, that, but, that was the tough side of it. Nathan Martial was 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 another was was on top form as well. He seemed a bit more direct. It was like he was just running at players a bit more, and his link-up play was good. Um, how how to how does Ole Gunnar Solskjaer motivate him consistently? Because that seems to be the problem. No, I think it's more to do with um, um, it's more to do for him. I think uh, the quality into him as well. Like mm-hmm. United, we don't seem to put quality into our forwards good enough for them to get quality balls to do something with it. But today, because it was one of them games where obviously City do go forward and they leave more space, you can find your men and they can get it to feet and start running with it and trying to pass it. You notice mm-hmm. we don't play like that normally. Like we're mm-hmm. normally trying to break down, you know, a low block and then we can't do nothing because we're moving the ball very slowly and then we can't open anything up. But like today, when you get quality to, to Martial, he does that. And that's the difference. If we can then, it all boils down to it again, like I've said, even reason why we played like against Palace like we did, we had an extra man defensively, which means we have less going forward, which means we have less quality into the men. Cavani never gets a chance. Why? We've only got the one Fernandez there. If we had another man pushing forward, buying at the back, with, um, obviously we did have buying at the back, but we had the two sitting again, and that's what happened. So I think... Um, Often, more often than not, you're going to get games where the quality is not right into the strikers or they're playing a low block, you don't get much. So it's not always Martial's fault, you get what I mean? I think mm-hmm. it's more to do with how the game is being played. And um, once we get that right, I think you'll see a lot more consistency from United. Mm-hmm. But as Pep said today, what didn't he? He said, as soon as you get that right, that's the, the being able to block, um, stop a low block, Man United are going to be a force because you can mm-hmm. count and then... Break down a low block. You got both right now. What, we can't break down no low block. What is it you think they need? Uh, another bit of, another bit of uh, creativity in and around the, the the forwards. Just the extra man going forward, and obviously quality in that mm-hmm. area. The extra man going forward, like James, he did well today. He's been playing well recently, but I think if we had more quality on the right, then you now got much more that can come out of a game, much more end product that can come out of an attack. You got Rashford on the left, Marshall, and then someone on the right, like a Sancho, for example. You know what I mean? So if you get someone like that up there, and then the extra, let's say for example, you had Pogba with just Fred. Obviously, we want to upgrade on Fred, but the the difference is, is Pogba's an attacker who's more looking forward for players, and then you got Bruno as well, who's more looking forward. Right now, we've got Fred and McTominay. They're not really the ones that can Fred through balls, can they? So that's the difference. You get one extra player in there and a bit more quality in the attacking third, then you've got a great, you know, a great side that can break down anything. And 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 Milan on Thursday, West Ham on Sunday, big big week for you. Yeah, always going to be a big. It's going to be a big every week for us at the moment because any slip ups now, mm. we're going to be out of top spot. It's very easy to go third, fourth now. Chelsea are breathing down our necks. Leicester are breathing down our necks. City have run away with it already, so forget about them. But um, <laughs> you know, the main thing is, is we've got we got a, we've got to to uh, to show up mm. in them games where you expect to win. Today we expected to lose, so we we, we you know we dis, we ended up playing well. Why can't we do that when we're expected to win? Let's mm. do it. Let's get them mm. final games won, like West Ham's, like the rest of these games of the season. Let's see if we can do it. Yeah, so it's, it's a big game against West Ham. You don't want to be dropping points against David Moyes. Um, they're in, they're in, they're in fine form, and and 
yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're trying to get Europe themselves, so they're going to yeah. be trying to get, get them points as well. Exactly. Um, Simon, would you just you put up your hand to ask a question, was it? Uh, yeah, basically, Kevin, with the squad that you've got, obviously today you could see City were proper lacking a striker, you know, like a natural striker. And basically, what areas do you think in the summer Pep will look at to improve City? Well, I think a striker, definitely. You know, yeah. Sergio, Sergio, God bless him, has been absolutely unbelievable for us. But injuries have taken the toll. You know, he's been injured pretty much for a year and a year and a half, give or take a few games. I quite like Gabriel Jesus. I think he's very much underrated by a lot of people. But he's not an out-and-out -out striker. We do, mm. need, we do need an out-and-out -out striker into yeah. the team. Um and probably a left back, you know, somebody with with a, a little bit more about them than we've got. Cancelo has played great on the left. Sinchenko has played great on the left. But we don't have a real. I mean, Sinchenko, when he plays for the national team, plays in midfield. You know, we signed yeah, him in midfield, and he plays for the national team in midfield for the Ukraine. So um, I think we need a yeah a left back and a striker. Beyond that, you can't be critical. There might be a little bit of squad rotation in there. I have a feeling that we might get to the end of the season and Laporte, because he's not getting the game time he got, might want to move on somewhere else. So if Laporte wants to move on, then you probably have to replace him. Fernandinho, they're probably not going to give him a contract beyond the end of this season. So Yeah, that's what I was thinking. You, you probably need to find somebody to replace him. Um, but the priority is the striker, definitely. After that, listen, once we've got Haaland... And <laughs> Please stay away from Bakayo Saka as well. Please, he's all we've got. He's all we've got. He is a very, very good player. I mean, and uh, you know, we can't be too greedy. Well, I, we thought he's, I thought you was going to say he'd look good in the sky blue. I was going to. Well, no, I'm, I'm <laughs> off. I'm he's, off. He's to, well, I was going to say to be fair, we could we could chase Tierney, but that would be a little bit harsh. I think. <laughs> Hey, I, uh, that, good player as well. If that happened, if that happened, Kevin, we'd just go and get David Alaba. It's his dream to play for us. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Like, maybe, uh, maybe if this was 2015, sign. Si. No, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with Tini. I'm happy with Tini. By the way, I, I, I didn't come on to Liverpool. Yes. Oh God. Oh, yes. <laughs> now, now, now. One thing, one thing that you both, both Nathan and Kevin, will have something to say about is last year there was a lot of talk about Liverpool being the greatest champions of all time. Um, it, it came, it was, it was almost as if if you didn't say Liverpool were the greatest champions of all time, people were looking like, like, at you like you didn't know football. But people, <laughs> just, people massively dismissed the 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 Manchester United team in the like, since the Premier League began, like. But like the, especially the the treble winning team and then around that time the Invincibles Arsenal team and the Chelsea team Chelsea uh, all four all five the, the Chelsea, got Chelsea team underneath under uh, Jose Mourinho and the Man City team that's just, just broken a, a hundred points and, and absolutely dominated for the last four or five years. Now, do you the think Arsenal everyone was a bit? Do you think everyone was a bit too quick to be labelling them the greatest Champions League <laughs> champions of all time? Well, I think we, we did. Know. We did label them that. We did label them that. They did. Yeah, they did. <laughs> I think. I think we all know it's a media-led thing. I think you know it's all about clickbait and talk about mm -hmm. Liverpool being uh, the greatest team ever, who just about managed to win. Well, not just about. They very well won the Premier League last year, but it was after mm -hmm. thirty years, you know. And the season before, they did very, very well, didn't they? They got. Um, they got. Um, they got ninety-seven points. Unfortunately, City got ninety-eight points. Surprisingly, you would have you would have thought that, that Liverpool, yeah, Liverpool would have won it, yeah, a, a, a league that year, you know. Yeah. Uh, and in the same season, by the way, that City got ninety eight points to to beat Liverpool to the league. City also won the FA Cup and the the League Cup. And Fergie, God bless, him, said there, there is never any possibility of any team in England ever winning the domestic treble. He said that years and years ago because it's too difficult to do. Yet Liverpool were being 
hailed uh, because they won the Champions League that year, which was a great achievement, by the way. But in the same year that they won the Champions League, which is a cup competition, we won the Premier League, the League Cup, and the FA Cup. <laughs> the season before, we got a hundred points. So that, for me, is is a greater achievement than Liverpool getting ninety nine points. I know there's only a point in it, but. I think you know the point I'm making. Listen, I, I grew up on... I've always been a City fan, but I grew up in the, the late 70s, early 80s watching Liverpool and they were a fantastic football team. The way mm -hmm. they played football, Sooners and McDermott and Hanson and uh, players like that, Ray Clements in Nets and Phil Neal, they were a really great football team. I enjoyed watching them. Something happened to them over the last 10 years that I think a lot of neutral football fans actually despise. <laughs> I, I don't quite know what it is, you know. I think it's more to do with their support base rather than 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 the team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't quite know what it is. Fair play to them; they managed to sustain for three years. Great football, by the way. But the one yeah. thing they never did: they listen. You cannot play the same three forwards: Salah, Mane, yeah. Firmino, week mm. after week after week after week after week for three seasons. But the reality is, you can't blame the players for that. The only yeah. yeah, either the club didn't invest as well as he should have done, or Klopp didn't invest as well. He was given the opportunity to. I'm not yeah. quite sure which. Yeah, you, 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 apart, you know, joking apart. But lose. Listen, the worst period of my life ever as a City fan was watching Stuart Pearce manage Manchester City at the Etihad, when. Mm from January the 1st of the season that he was manager until the end of the season, we did not score a single goal at home. What? But yes, true. Wow. We, we scored 10 goals at home in the season and they were before January the 1st. But in all of that, we never lost six at home on the bounce. So, yeah. Lucas, yeah. Lucas yeah. I do feel sorry for them. So, so Nathan... Off the back of that, bad champions, would you class them as? As soon as I saw them win the league last season, I noticed straight away a drop-off. Straight yeah. away, the, the next game, they dropped off. Mm. And every game after that, they were just nowhere near the same team as they were. Mm -hmm. And I, I was mentioning it all the time. And then the start of the season came, they remember they lost big to Villa. And I was like, man, this, they're just not the same. They are not the same. I don't know. I, I think everyone else was struggling at the start of the season. So I thought... You know what, Liverpool are probably still going to go and win it. And then I said, but remember, it only takes an injury to a big player. Yeah. And then you're just like everyone else in the mix. So Van Dijk goes, then Gomez goes, then it was Trent that went. So I'm like, listen, guys, this team are not going to be top of the league. They're just not going to win every game with that team, especially mm -hmm. after the drop off. And then they got injuries. And that's what I said. Listen, guys, remember Man United last season with so many injuries and having to play youth team players for, you know, players getting their first few first team games. That's why we're so bad. And then now you look and see only takes one little player. Well, I guess I would say Van Dyke's the main guy to yeah. come out of there and then people feel that they can get at them. And then it puts more pressure on the attackers because they're going into games thinking we're going to concede it. We're going to need more than one goal. So they pressure themselves. And then it becomes a psychology thing. Then they come into games a bit more uptight. Then they're losing games. So that's what that's what happens. And this is do you, look, the minute. Do you think that the I've, Do you think that the owners rested on their laurels after what looked like a Champions League season and and mm. doing so well last season? Do you think they, they they didn't feel that they needed to reinforcements as much? This is one big surprise that I didn't realize. I didn't think Klopp would do because mm. um, I'm watching Liverpool. I'm thinking. Why are they not bringing any players in? Like, mm. how can they not, like, have a second team kind of like like City have, like United are trying to have? you got to have some strength in depth. They've got no strength in depth. They've got a first 11 and probably one player who can come in and, and make them exactly the same. Yeah. Everyone else is like, have you heard of him before? Have you heard of him before? He's just come through the youth. He's come through the youth. Uh, him as well. well. That's it. They've not brought mm. anyone. They need to buy. I don't want them to buy, obviously, because, <laughs> you know, it's a, I was just very surprised at top of all people, you know, knowing what he's done with lesser teams, Germany, you know, he's done really well with the Dortmund squads before people didn't even know them players that much until they like, appeared and started beating everyone. 
than everyone wanted his players. I thought he would be doing the same looking out for these little players that no one knows about. He's not done it. He's not done that this, um, last few years. Yeah. Steve, what, 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 sorry, it's gone, sir. I, oh, so I was, I was just going to say, I know everyone says Liverpool and injuries, but I won't actually put it just down to injuries. I think I put it on my Twitter when I watched that game today against Fulham. Salah, for me, very good goal scorer, but he's a terrible player. Absolutely a terrible player. He doesn't track back. He doesn't work for the team. Jota was through so many times. He didn't once look up, look, put his head up to look that <coughs> he was through. He just basically made the easiest pass. Mane, for me, as well, is lazy this season. It's like he can't be bothered. It's like he's not interested. Firmino's trying. You can see he's trying. Trent, for me, he's been shocking as well, defensively as well. It's not just down to injuries. I think it's a mentality for these players as well. And I think that's what Klopp thinks as well. These players are looking at themselves and going, well, we've won league, we've won Champions League, we've done what we need to do. We don't need to try this year. That's what no. I think. That's not how players think. Players don't think like that. It's hard, it's hard to switch it off. Going to a game going, I don't care if I don't win here. Yeah. It, it's a, it's it just looks point. like it on the pitch. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to that. I must be honest, I, 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 as a supporter, I've never ever supported the idea where other supporters say the team didn't try. I think yeah. even, um, even the Fulham, Scott Parker today sort of suggested that Fulham wanted it a little bit more than, than Liverpool, and I always find that hard to believe. I think Klopp they, didn't like that comment, did he? I don't agree uh, with that. I, I, I sort of understand It looked that. like it with Fulham. They played really well, yeah. they were organised and everything. Yeah, no, I thought, but that, but also that, for me, takes a little bit of credit away from Fulham. Mm. I think mm. you know, Fulham, Fulham played really, really well. Yeah. They shouldn't almost turn around and say, well, we wanted it. Well, I don't think that happens with footballers, to be honest. But I do think, going back to Nathan's point, I think the very it's a very good point because Klopp should have wanted to bring, and Fergie did it, and Pepper's done it, Ferg, uh, Klopp should have wanted to bring in better players having won the Premier League and yeah. having won the Champions League to put greater pressure on the players that are in the team. It's and that's ahead. where we come from. Mm. It's not so much about not wanting to play or not trying. It's about the pressure that you have on you to maintain your performance. Yeah. And in everyday yeah. life, we all work a little bit harder if we think there's somebody looking over our shoulder or if there's somebody putting pressure on us. But I think if we think, I'm in that comfortable stage now, you know, I'm under no pressure, nobody's looking at me. Nobody's trying to take my job from me. We all do relax a little bit. And I think that's where... Now, Klopp might have got it wrong because he wasn't given the finances, finances by the FSB group. Who, who really knows? But certainly one thing is for sure. If they didn't have the finances in the summer, they will certainly they not have the finances. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't have the, for the Champions League. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Steve, yeah. Steve, do you think it was Klopp who, who felt like his team was essentially complete? Or do you think it was the board who didn't feel like they needed to really push for, for any more players? Uh, well, I don't know where this is that they haven't got more players in. I've, I've just... I've no, got but two, over the... I, over I've, the got two, I've got two world-class ones. That are just, well, not world-class, but, you know, they, they, they brought in Diego Jota and Alicantera for... That's two for a start. So they okay, but them. over so, the so last have... three seasons, over the last three seasons, have they adequately uh, added to their squad to keep them ahead or keep them up there with Man City? I, no, I've, they ain't got I've, honours. I've, 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 I think, I think they have, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, 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 I don't I, agree. I, I, think, I, think, I, think they, I, I think they have. I think uh, they have had injuries, fair enough. You know, every, everybody has injuries. That's you, you, you know, that's part and parcel of, of, of football. Um, they, they've been they've had injuries in play, but sometimes it depends where you have your injuries. Some people can have three or four or five injuries, and they could be in places where it's not important. Liverpool, Liverpool have had two massive injuries in two massive places. Um, so um, you know, Van Dyke. Massive, you know, someone to lose. Jordan Henderson, another massive player player to use. They bought Alicantara in. They bought Jotter in. Um, mm. Three up front. 
I mean, how can you, 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 if you're going into a transfer window and you're looking at, you, it, it's hard to go to, to go to a club and say, you can be my second striker because Mane, Firmino and Mane are not going to be dropped. It's very difficult. You know, you yeah, can't, it, you, it, don't, it, you it, can't it, just, you can't just walk in. And what people got to think of as well is what the situation is. The, Liverpool's grand is uh, the cop. Is, that's their 12th man. That's their 12th man. Some, some, sometimes they have teams of their 12th man. You know, so Arsenal, you know, you know, they'll have a certain player, right? But Liverpool, for me, it was their grand and their home grand. They've got no supporters at the minute. They, with, they're battling against COVID. That, no one's got it. computers. No one's, no one's got supporters. No one's got supporters. Everyone's in the same boat. No one has got No, what I'm saying is, what I just... What I said, I clock, it what, like I said what I said, it was it, it. The, it's their 12th man. I get it. Yeah. And when they I go to that. play at Anfield, it's that extra lift that I they get. get. That. It's I'm like not... Sheffield United. It's like Sheffield yeah. United. They're, they're where it's... they are because they've got no fans. That, that, so that, 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 that is a fact. So they've, that's ta having that taken away from Liverpool is, is massive. It's a, is a yeah. massive thing. I don't think they would be where they are if they had that. It's all right. You say like, oh, well, nobody else has got it, and all the other people are coming to the grand and the clock. They're loving it. They don't want to go to Liverpool and play Liverpool in front of forty, fifty thousand pound thousand people, and they mm. they get slaughtered. They're going there now. The Fulhams, the Brightons, the whoever's, and they're winning. Hmm. And why do you they think they're winning? Off. They're winning because they haven't got that. Monster of not winning because of that. They're not winning because of that. That's, you can't say they're winning. I can see where he's coming from, though. I can see where he's coming from. I know fans make a big difference. It does yeah. make a difference in them playing better, yeah. Yeah. If you're going yeah. to a cop, you're going to the cop, it does lift them. We've seen it over the telly over the yeah. years. We've watched yeah. it enough. Yeah. We, when they've been 3 0 down and that, well, they've, they've lifted them up, and all of a sudden they've come back. No, they no get, doubt. Every, every single lift. No. Liverpool. Doubt. So all I've said is that's, that's a little. That is a, a one, one, 100%. I don't, I, I don't 100%. want to go. I don't. I don't want to go too into that. It's the main thing, and that's why they're no. six or seven. I'm just saying that that's a little no. fact of reason why that yeah. that's yeah. where they are. And you don't. And for me, they you don't. They don't seem to a bad side overnight. But they, you know and, I, I think it's a blip. I think it's a blip. I think. I think it's a blip. United's away um, with a winning streak and home form is probably a lot to do with the fans as well. Like us winning more games than at home. You know what I mean? A lot of teams coming at United at Old Trafford and beating us. But you can't... Thank really you. Thank you. It's exactly, exactly what I'm saying. It's United, exactly what I'm saying. It's going to be the same for, for them as well. I can't say it's just because of that or... You know, I mean, it's, I know it makes a difference. I think it makes a difference for everyone. Yeah. But it makes yeah. everyone play better, maybe, when they're yeah. at home and they got their own fans. Yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I said, when, two other when, things. When, I said, I said that was just one part. I mean, you what, jumped on me for that one bit. There no, 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 no. When, <laughs> when, 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 when exactly. I was confident, I was scoring 20 plus goals a season. The minute I stop playing often and then coming in and coming out, then I'm on, I start thinking of, I just need to get all the ball and play it to a man. Oh, you start doing things differently. I've amazing. I've done mm. well. I've kept it. And mm. that was my mind about doing well, just keeping the ball. Mm. The mm. reality is, is, I wasn't thinking, let me rip this guy and score in the top bins. That's how I used to think. But I'm Nathan, who, where goal, would you, would you rather, rich. would you rather play Liverpool with no crowd or with crowd? Which you was going there? Would you? To be fair, I don't care about crowds. Me, to be on me, I don't care if I'm at home or away. As long as the pitch is nice, I don't care. I don't yeah. mind that yeah, at that's all. Fine, yeah. But when it comes yeah. to mind, if your manager's against you, or you know, if your manager doesn't believe in you, or your players don't believe in you, or you're having mm. a bad spell, you in your head, it changes your game. You mm. Exactly. Can be exactly. A great player, then you can go to an average player just because of inside your head, and that's what's happening that's what's, with the players right now. That's what I said. Yeah. Yeah. Liverpool, yeah. yeah. Liverpool. Last year. If it divided the ball edge, if it didn't wait, 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 sorry, 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 wait, 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 wait. Liverpool this year, yeah. Yes, you're right, Steve. They went out and bought Diego Jota, uh, and Thiago Alcantara. Uh, excellent signings. 
But last year, after they won the Champions League, where they was pushing to to win the league, they bought they bought Minamino, and and for mm. me, that's not good enough. That's not setting up. You're you're you you essentially you've you've lined up because Liverpool that year they felt they should have won the league. They've got their their strong front three. They've got their midfield, and they're building towards that. That's where you add in players for the for the maybe not even for the season coming, uh, but the, the the following season after that. They've 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 had um, Gomez and uh, Van Dijk, um, and then I mean Joel Matip is he good enough? They've got they've been playing Fabinho the season before in centre centre back for a, a lot of games because of uh, injuries coming in, and they've had to go and get Johan uh, Ozan mm. Kabak and, and and Davis in in the January transfer window. Mm-hmm. This is what I'm saying about bringing in uh, reinforcements and, and and keeping it a step ahead. Those two centre back signings, or a centre back sign at least, should have been done in the summer. It shouldn't have even been thought about that they're, they're bringing mm-hmm. them in. The and we and know ourselves that they were going for centre backs in the summer, but they didn't many, go through many, it. How many centre halves yeah. they got? Did they get injured? I mean, I know it was in a matter of five weeks they all got injured. How many was it? Uh, it was the two of them. It was Van three, Dijk, weren't it? Gomez, three. Matic. It was three, weren't it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you, you ain't going to expect that, are you? No, you're not. Yeah. But how, how much? How much? <laughs> look, look, bar, 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 bar um, Van Dyke's. I mean, that was an awful challenge from from Pickford. We but both- how, how, how do we how do we know that the other ones weren't because these players are being played too much because they're being overrun? That and, and this is what it boils down to. So this I is what I'm saying. Is, I think that is my point from before. I think that I think Klopp has overplayed that squad way too yeah. much. You have to 100%. rotate. He's overplayed them, and I think he's got a, a lot to blame for that. And listen, if we think at the start of the season, the very first game of the season, Liverpool, they played Leeds at Anfield and they won 4-3. I think the yeah. signs were there already, the players mm-hmm. were fatigued. They went to Villa and they lost 7-2 with Van Dijk in the, in the squad. Mm-hmm. So I think the signs were there right at the start of the season that this squad was tired, that they'd been overplayed, that they hadn't been rotated enough. And you can't you can't allow injury to Van Dijk. To be fair, it was a, a freak of a, an injury following that uh, challenge from the goalkeeper. Mm-hmm. But I do think that Liverpool brought it on themselves a little bit, you, especially with the way that that season happened. With the break, and then players came back, and the games were playing too often, and then the season started again. Players did not have a proper pre-season. Players were training at home, you know, they were trying to keep fit at home in the garden. And that's the, the, the punishment for Liverpool was not investing at the squad when they were at their peak. Mm. And, and Pep has done it a lot at City and we get criticised for it. And I do sort of understand that. But nobody did it as well as Fergie did it when he was yeah. at United. Yeah, yeah. excellent. were at their peak and they would go out and sign top players. To replace top players, by the way, I think we all yeah. used to look at United and think, "Okay, why is he gone?" And he was right at the top of his game. Yeah, and, and that's what you need to mm. do, and that's where Klopp has got it wrong a little bit for me. But don't you remember in the transfer window what was we I saying about what, what what was we saying about Liverpool? What was we saying about their transfer? The way they was going about their transfers. Two ways they've that? got no money. They've got no money. They've no. got no. They've money. got bad owners. They've we got kept, bad we, owners. We, we, we kept coming up with it. We kept saying no. It's not happening. They've got no money. They want to get loans. They kept going for loans and loans. And like in the end, they got Jota on the cheap. They got Alec and Tara for a, for a cheap for, a, for for what he is thirty they million. Which is, at a stretch as well. Which, which was unbelievable. Which is unbelievable. They played. They got for seventy million for just those two. It's unbelievable. Mm-hmm. But. All the other, but we kept saying it. We're saying it on every show. They've got no money. They've got nothing, and mm. it got proved. And, it, and we're saying there that Liverpool haven't bought nobody. Well, <laughs> they haven't. No, they didn't have no money. What we, you know, we don't. We're not. Ozan, Ozan that, kebabs possibly. on loan, isn't he? He's not a permanent buy. I know, no, he's not. How, but how can they have no money? Because you know. But, they finished second in the Premier League and they won the Champions League. Yeah. And then won the, how can they have no money? Though this is sense. it. With, it was... with Anfield, they had the new stand. That was 90 million, that stand mm. that they've had done. FSG paid for that stand. I've got this on good authority because I've been telling people as well. That stand, obviously, 
FSG have paid for that because they'll put more people in the ground, which is yeah. it makes more revenue that way. FSG mm -hmm. are not there at Ars at, no, sorry, are not there at Liverpool to be like what City are and help build the squad. You have mm -hmm. to sell before you can buy. When you look at that, they got uh, rid of Solanke for twenty million. We the, we we got forty million for Chamberlain. Does he even play for them anymore? This is what this this is the only thing well, they, think, they have to think, they have to sell before they buy. But I also think they spent sixteen million pounds on Keater, Keater, I think, didn't they? You know, mm. well, every single every single player they was. Every single day player they were every well, single player they was going for, Kevin. Every single player they was asking for loans. Every single yeah. one. Can I have a loan? We were alone. And, and, and I do accept that that stand costs ninety million pounds. Yeah. That's so, organized in a different way, you know, that's spread over a certain number of years. If they paid for it, they're probably taking that back with a higher interest rate. Mm, I do accept yeah. that as well. I, but I, I think it's just not great investment in the squad, even if the squad um even if you brought players in at a, a lower level, they just needed to rotate it. And that's why yeah. I think players ended up being injured. You know, yeah. you, can't, you just can't carry on playing. It's a, Listen, I'm not... I was going to say it's a shame. Am I really disappointed about it? I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I would be lying. I'm sorry for the players because you don't want the players to be injured. But I'm, mm -hmm. I'm certainly not disappointed in... Liverpool's apparent demise at the moment. It's it's the nature of football. Mm. Yeah, mm. Uh, Jerome. Yeah, you, you, you wanted yeah. to say something. Yeah, like what, what's happened recently? To finish above Man City, you've got to be incredible. The way the way they've played football the last few years is it's another planet to the, te to the teams in the Premier League at the top. For Liverpool to have won the league. Um, and to say that their players were overplayed, I don't think without overplaying those players that season they win the league. So it's yeah. sort of it's sort of come at a bit of a cost. Was in challenge. But it's, yeah, it's kind of a cost, but you could say, would you rather rotate slightly and have two very good seasons? It's not as simple as this, but rotate slightly and you have two excellent seasons, maybe finish mm. second and third, or have one incredible season, win the league, then the next mm. season you finish. You know, fifth, sixth, seventh. That'd have probably taken win the league one year and have a bit of a dodgy year the next year. Also, oh, like, yeah, I, think, what, yeah. I, I saw, I saw, I saw, I've I saw grabbed, I've grabbed your heads off. Grabbed I, saw your heads agree, off that. I sort of agree with Steve in some way. Maybe they haven't got the most incredible uh, depth in terms of their squad, but they had they have spent money in the last few years. Maybe not a couple of years ago, like you said, Kieran. They should have maybe gone for it a bit more. But it's, it is hard to sign top top quality players in the forward positions when you've got your likes of Salah, Firmino and Mane because the, the player knows that he might not play as much I mean he brought up Naby Keita he costs about 50 million he hardly ever plays yeah um, I, I, yeah I think but I and think what it, going up. It, it, for me yeah okay you've got you've got Salah, Mane and Firmino that's that's decent that is hard to turn around to any top class striker and say mm. all right mate this is your spot it's on the bench couple of pillows whatever but what what they do need to look at is, do they not need to look at a young player, someone who's yes, an up and coming exactly. player who could potentially nice come in? Either. Man United mm -hmm. went out and got Diallo. Uh, uh, Man City went out and got Ferran Torres. They've also brought through the likes of Phil Foden because they know they've. I mean, Man City have invested in a youth uh, development. It, it's it's the best, one of the best in the world. Like if not the best, it's ridiculously good. So they know they've got these players coming through, and if not, yeah. they're going to come and buy these players. This is all I'm saying is, yeah. yes, it's hard to get that player to come in to knowing for well you've got that in front of you. Because but that young player... You find an exciting young player. Yeah, you're right. But, mm. but that young player has got to be incredibly good because he's going to be joining a team that's challenging to win the league. So yeah. that level of player has got to be, it's got to be ridiculous. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's very tough. And I think they have been unlucky, Liverpool. The injuries are just, you know, you would never get that in a season, the injuries that you've had. Like you're starting three centre backs. Any any team, if United lost their starting three centre backs, like any any team would be in a mess. If you go yeah. through, so it's, yeah. a, it's a bit, it's a bit, it's a bit much. Yeah. It baffles yeah. me as well. Like, they don't shoot from outside the box. I've what all season they haven't shot. 
outside the box, have they? They stick to the same thing that they did the year they won the league, where it's the full-backs that are crossing the ball and they're trying to basically tip-tap it to the to the net and obviously put it ball into back at net. They don't shoot from outside but the, the box. But the thing is, so they, 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 there's, they, there's, there's reasons for these kind of things. That it breaks up play. Managers want fluidity. Like There's, there's reasons. So it, it's not as simple as just saying they don't shoot from outside the box. I think it's, 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 a, it's a certain style of play. If, mm-hmm. if 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 they've if they've 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 been they're used to that, isn't it? They're yeah, they've been. I mean, to be fair to Liverpool, they want to get inside the box as much as they can so they can fall over. Yes. <laughs> 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 I mean, they, yeah. they attack. They attack down the flanks. Don't they? They attack down the flanks. Kevin's coming out and, and, they, and they and they part, pass it. They're a bit ticky tacky in the middle of the park, and yeah, they, you know, you know, and they play the ball to their forwards, and then they go down the flanks with, you know, Robinson or Trent Arnold. So you're not, you're not going to see many, yeah, yeah. you know, forty it's, yard. And I can't think, yeah. And they it's, ain't done bad. And they ain't done bad without it, have they? They ain't done bad. And I mean, he, he does. <laughs> I mean, Sa- Salah's definitely scored a couple, and and <laughs> Firmino's definitely had a couple of uh, winders as well in the top bins. But um, yeah, He's I mean, top goal scorer in Salah this year, seventeen yeah. goals. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. All right. Mm. What a discussion that was, Kevin, <laughs> Nathan. Thank you very much for joining <laughs> us tonight. <laughs> ah, that was brilliant. Brilliant. Loved it. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, we'll definitely have you on again soon, Kevin. Love that. Right, thank up. you very much. And, and Nathan, thank, thank you very much. For, thank you very much. Cheers, right, Nathan. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much for coming on. Speak to you later, Kev. Cheers, yeah. nice. All right. What a, what a start to the show. Brilliant. Brilliant. I thoroughly enjoyed that. I really enjoyed that. We've got uh, Liam uh, Toomey coming on soon. Um, first of all, let's, let's, let's go to... Uh, Jerome for a little Guardian Top 60 before Liam comes on. Yeah, so a lot of these, a lot of these Guardian Top 60s, to be honest, obviously they're they're all very young. So, um, you know, we haven't, you know, it's sort of rare to hear to hear of these players, and this is definitely one. But I thought we might have heard of him because he's he's a young Scottish player that's at Bayern Munich, um, okay. called Liam Morrison. He's a 17 year old centre back. He was part of Celtic's sort of youth setup, but he, he left them uh, when he was 16 and he, he quickly got promoted to Bayern Munich's under-19 team, like playing a, like, a couple of years ahead of himself. Um, now, the Scottish youth coach that he's got reckons that this kid has got the potential to be, you know, a top player in the Champions League. Um, he can play sort of, you know, right centre-back or left centre-back very easily, no issues there, um, sort of brings the ball out of defence and can beat a man and then play the pass rather than just looking to pass it straight away. Um, they were, he's been likened to sort of Matt's Hummels, the way he plays right. the game. But um, yeah, a, a, you know, a guy, young guy from from, um, from Scotland playing at Bayern Munich, it's a, a ma- amazing step to take. So, um, And we know that Bayern Munich normally get their, get their signings right, don't they? So Yeah. Really yeah, 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 I mean, there's, there's Alfonso Davis, um, yeah. t- t- uh, the, the, the guy that you spoke about, that yeah, the guy that you spoke about last week that's just come over from America. Um, yeah. They seem to, and and, and the uh, the young the young kid who's just signed from Reading, um, is it Omar Omar Richards? Oh, that's it. Yeah, yeah. So mm. they're, uh, they're they're recruiting they're recruiting for the future, which is um, <laughs> some, some some top players coming through. Um, <laughs> All right. While we're waiting for um, uh, while we're waiting for Liam, let's 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 do a bit of uh, the old transfer roundup before Liam comes on. But Steve, you've got a little bit of information about uh, Manchester City, haven't you? Probably should have done it while Kevin was on. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, I don't know. Mind you, you might not want to hear this, so. Oh, uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Liam's, Liam's just joined us. Liam's just joined us, Steve. Oh, right. That live TV, love it. How are you doing, Liam? I'm good, guys. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. Cool. Quality sound. Yeah, yeah. Very good cool, sound. yeah. Very good yeah. Sound. What, what, what microphone are you using? <laughs> I'm using the one we use for our podcast. All right, very uh, good. Uh, you all right, Liam? Awesome. Yeah, good. All good. right. Yeah. Pleasure to be um, here. That's okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for joining us. Um... Thomas Tuchel, 
how, how much of a how much of a change is he is he made to Chelsea? We've seen it on the pitch, but how much how much behind the scenes has he made? Uh, well, I think you look at some of the problems that were there towards the end of Lampard's time. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the things that were in our in our big story after he was sacked that mm-hmm. a lot of players felt that you know they were ignored. Um, the ones that weren't playing regularly under him, and that they felt like they weren't given kind of guidance about how they could get back into the team or how they could improve or recover their confidence. Um, and, to, you know, to a certain extent, that's true of any coach. Uh, so it's certainly not exclusive to, to Lampard, but it's clear that Tuchel has... It's freeze, there. I thought we'd all froze again, Ben. It's having dramatic pause. It's all right. Hold on. No, nope, he's back. Sorry, guys. Yeah, I'm, if it dips out again, I might move into the other room to be right, closer cool. to the router. But um, yeah. sorry. No, no, just to say, uh, yeah, when when it comes to Tuchel, he's, he's made a, a clear effort coming in to do the opposite of what was happening towards the end of Lampard's time. Mm-hmm. He's, he's, he's made a, a big push to involve the players a lot of the players that felt out of the loop. Um, you know, you look particularly like someone someone like Marcus Alonso, whose Chelsea career was over to, mm-hmm. to all intents and purposes um, yeah. after that Bo- yeah. Bournemouth clash. Keppers even got some minutes um, and a chance to build up some confidence again. So that's been the main thing, really. He's, I think he's been trying to bring the squad together again. That will get harder to do the more that he has to consistently disappoint players himself. Yeah. Um, and I think we're already starting to see that because this is a very large squad with a lot of very expensive players. It's very difficult to play them all enough to keep them all happy. Um, but as long as the team is winning pretty consistently, there's not much that uh, those on the outside can say. Yeah. Do, do you think that um, it was a bit of naivety on, on Lampard's uh, part with regards to the, the man management? Um, do you think you may have felt that these players are not in his um, sort of in his eye for the future, so he's just going to dismiss him and maybe get in his own one. What, what, what do you think it was with Lampard? I don't know if naivety is the word I'd use um, because I think he's been in elite dressing rooms, you mm. know, his entire career. I think he's aware of the dynamics that are at play, even if because of how Last good he was, yeah. he he didn't actually find himself in that situation very often. Yeah. Uh, so maybe maybe he doesn't know particularly how to relate to that. I don't know. That's pure speculation. I, I don't know what, what's in his head. But um, mm-hmm. I think it was a miscalculation. It proved to be a miscalculation. Um, and like like I said, to, to an extent, it's true of all coaches that the players that they don't play don't really like them. Um, yeah. It's just a, a, an occupational hazard. And if you're, mm. if you're not winning games, those problems become amplified. And that, in the end, was Lampard's main problem, was that he was picking the players he wanted to pick, but he wasn't getting the results that the club were demanding of him um, yeah. and and when that happens the dressing room becomes an issue just as everything else becomes an issue that is used against you um but on the kind of you know inexperience front or or na- naivety front I, I i wouldn't necessarily call it naivety but is it any surprise really that lampard would have made mistakes in this job it's no. his no. third year. No, because he made loads at Derby. He made loads of mistakes at Derby. But he's, 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 a, he's a new manager as well. He's, he's yeah. learning. He's, he he's learning on the job, and it's yeah. not mm. his fault. It's not mm. his fault that he got offered the Chelsea job, his dream job, a year into his coaching career. You know, it, he, he's not going to turn it down once he once he gets off of it. I was going to ask you, Liam. Um, do you think it was too early for for Lampard? And, and now is that. Is there that bit of sadness that he, he may not be a Chelsea manager, you know, in the future because of just due to the fact that he's already been there um, when he could have gone to, say, somewhere like Crystal Palace, Newcastle, and then in three or four years gone to Chelsea? I don't think you can rule out him coming back. I didn't think Mourinho would come back. <laughs> um, after <laughs> the first time. So, yeah, yeah, we've, we've seen that. We've seen that Roman Abramovich is not above. He's not. He's not too proud to go back to a coach that he sacked before. Um, and uh, you know, we'll we'll see. I, what I what I can say, I think, 
pretty confidently is that Lampard won't won't get the Chelsea job again in the same sort of circumstances that he got it this time around because the the, the circumstances were unique. Um, you know, Chelsea had a transfer ban. They knew they were losing their best player. They weren't as attractive to top proven coaches as they normally would be. And they knew all of this. And at the same time, they wanted a bit of a PR boost um, after the, the toxicity of the, the Sarri era and what that did to the fan base. And they, they thought that Lampard ticked all of those boxes in spite of his inexperience. Yeah. Um, now, I think if he wants the job again, he will have to go elsewhere and build the kind of body of work that Thomas, Thomas Tuchel has or that yeah. you know, another proven European coach does because that is the normal mm. standard that you would expect mm. to mm. in order to be seriously considered for a job like Chelsea. Yeah. yeah. Mm. What, 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 what do you think Thomas Tuchel could bring to Chelsea? Um, yeah, what, what, what do you think he could bring to Chelsea to make him step, uh, step him up as a gear? Well, I think one of the main things is it has been his big achievement so far, which is that he's brought a real structure um, and a balance to this team, which was lacking before. You know, I think I, they're, not, they're certainly not playing. They're not as exciting to watch as they were under Lampard. Mm -hmm. um, but the problem was they were exciting at both ends. <laughs> and yeah. and that, that towards the end, that wasn't that equation was not working out in Lampard's favour. So Tuchel has clearly made it a priority coming in to say, we will not concede goals. We will not give teams an opportunity to hurt us on the counter-attack. Mm -hmm. we, we are going to build as a high-possession team, but we're going to keep five men behind the ball, those two midfielders, that back three. And you've seen even some of the most dangerous counter-attacking teams in the league. How many times did Man United catch Man City on the break? in the game today. They didn't really do that to Chelsea very often. There were maybe no, a couple no. of moments. And that and yeah. you know how good United are in those situations. So I think and Liverpool as well. Mane and Salah, I know I know Liverpool are really struggling right now, but in terms of personnel, they had the ability to hurt Chelsea in transition, but they never really got the chance. Uh -huh. And that has been Tuchel's biggest achievement, I think, is that he is he's built this framework that means they, he's kind of already delivered on what he said at the start, which is he's going to build a team that's not fun to play against. Chelsea are not fun to play against. Oh. But the, the one the one problem he's got right now is that I think a lot of the things they're best at are things that don't really resonate with fans as much. So they're really good defensively. They're really good at pressing. And they're really good at making the opposition look bad. But they're not necessarily good. They're not necessarily good at building exciting games and playing yeah. free-flowing football and scoring yeah. three or four goals and maybe that will come yeah um but for yeah. the moment his pri his priority has been Chel from his point of view he's thinking we have the quality in midfield to dominate games we have the quality up front to find a goal from somewhere so what the value i can add to this team as a coach is that i can make sure we don't concede yeah, is, is there any similarities to him to Mourinho? You say like it's very like defensive and regimented. Uh, Mourinho was a bit like that, wasn't he, Liam? Yeah, in the in the kind of broadest terms, I think there is definitely a pragmatic um, streak to Tuchel. Um, I mean, in terms of system, the similarity is more there with Conte, really. Three at the um, back, you know. In, in three at the back with the wing backs. I mean, especially with Aspilicueta on the right of that back three, mm. the the rebirth of Alonso. Um, he, he puts on his Superman cape when he goes back to wing back. He's not. Mm. He doesn't wear yeah. it at full back. I've, I've said that for years. Yeah. yeah, but in um, watching. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, go on. Go on. I was going to say, in watching Thomas Tuchel in the ten games that he's been with Chelsea, I think his football is exactly the same as Maurizio Sarri. I think it's exactly the same because Savi played the exact same way with Chelsea players. What were there? Not the ones that are there now, but the ones that were there. The way he plays football, Tuckle, it's like Savi knew that they couldn't go gun ho every week and he knew his defence wasn't that good, if you get what I mean. And then he basically shuts everything at the back. It's like what Arteta's doing. He shuts everything at the back and then he, he's got other areas that he knows that he can try and explore from other teams. I just think Savi and Tuchel, they do set the team up exactly the same way. So that's what 
that's what bizarres me at the minute with Chelsea fans saying it's brilliant. I love him. He's brilliant. But what I've seen, it's like, well, Sarri was doing this and you all hounded him out of the club. So I'm just saying, yeah. like... Well, go, go on, I'll, ca- I'll caveat this by saying that I, I don't think we ever saw the football that Maurizio Sarri wanted to play at Chelsea. I don't think we ever saw the football that he played at Napoli. I don't think he ever got his Chelsea players to buy into, to buy into that and actually yeah. be able to execute it on the pitch. And so we are seeing something similar to what Sarri ended up playing. Um, mm. which was not not really his his vision, but d- it ended up being this kind of quite stodgy possession football at times, a bit sterile at times, kind of, kind of sterile control of games. But I think the key difference is that under Sarri, because they were still playing that 4-3-3 with Jorginho at, at the base and they weren't actually defending with a ton of players, they were still vulnerable in a way they haven't been under Tuchel. So they were controlling games in a similar way um, with around Jorginho and Kovacic and kind of making that the identity of the team. But they would still get caught on the counter. I mean, I, I remember Sarri's Chelsea getting beaten 4-0 at Bournemouth and that was one of the real, <laughs> real low points um, in terms of his relationship with the fans. Wow. And they were just atrocious that day defending in transition. They, they, they were made to look absolutely ridiculous. That hasn't happened to Tuchel's team because he's made sure the structure defensively is always there. Um, but I, 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 do, I do know what you mean in that there's a lot of passing, not a ton of penetration. And I do think in that sense, Tuchel has probably benefited from Stamford Bridge being empty so far. Yeah. <laughs> because I, I, I think the fans that go to Stamford Bridge, I know quite a few of them, quite a few of the season ticket holders. I, I, you know, I, even on like WhatsApp groups that I'm a part of with them, you know, you get a sense of the frustration watching the way Chelsea are playing right now. And I think that would, that would be heard in the stadium if they were oh. there. So in, su- in some ways, while Tuchel is still trying to nail this down, it's probably yeah. best that they've got like a training ground environment for these games. <laughs> but surely, surely not already. Like, yeah. like surely Chelsea w- would have gone from Lampard where they weren't happy in the end, although it would have been a sort of, it would have hurt to say they weren't happy because it's, it's the, the prodigal son. But th- th- Chelsea are winning now. Chelsea look like they've got, they've got some structure to the team. They look solid. Um, players are smiling. And it's not just players that are playing. Players that are on the bench are smiling. Like it's, it seems like he's got a nice, a good team dynamic of going as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think the the fans that were, were in the stadium, or the the regular season ticket holders, the the diehard fans that that go to games every week, um, there was there was outright fury when Lampard was sacked. Um, oh, okay. I think the, the the strength of feeling, you know, the connection they. Chelsea fans don't typically, ter- they don't turn on people they perceive to be one of their own. Mm. And Lampard is like the A1 tier of that. You know, yeah. they, they never ever yeah. would have called for him to be sacked. Mm. It wouldn't have mattered how bad the team was was playing. The fans yeah. in the stadium would never have called be- just because of what he means to the club. Uh-huh. Um, and, and so I think if they had been going to games, I think that it would have been similar Um for for Tuchel coming in as it was for uh, when Mourinho was sacked the second time. And I don't know if you remember, it was actually my first game covering Chelsea for ESPN was uh, Sunderland at home when they they booed the team in a 3-1 win (laughs) and booed booed every goal they scored. And it was, where were you when we were shit, you know? Yeah, Um, yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and all this stuff. I think it was it was a similar feeling when Lampard yeah. was sacked. Honestly, I do because just because of who Lampard was. Yeah. Um, and and mm. I think when you add to that the fact that Tuchel is now trying to play a very sort of cold, methodical, mm-hmm. if you were being harsh, kind of emotionless way play way of football. Um, I think that would have only amplified the sense of disconnect because it, it, a lot of people, like like Simon said, I think um, a lot of people in the stadium would have drawn the connection to Sarri immediately. Mm-hmm. Um, and the, and the, atmosphere, the atmosphere wouldn't have been great, I don't think. Yeah. No. Do, 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 do you feel like he was the best man for the job? Um, who was out there? Who was available? Yeah, it's difficult. Um, I mean, we know that they we know that they offered the job to Ralph Rangnick on an interim basis. On the until the end of the season, but he didn't want to be a caretaker, uh, and he would have been another interesting 
very interesting appointment. We know he wants to work in England. He's influenced Tuchel, influenced Klopp, influenced Nagelsmann, the entire German school. Um, so he would have been an interesting addition to the Premier League. Nagelsmann as well, although I don't think that was ever super realistic because Leipzig weren't going to let him go. Not now. And Chelsea were told not even in the summer. Um, yeah. So it would, at the very least, it would have been very expensive. And Chelsea yeah. weren't really looking for expensive um, so T Tuchel was available. He was a free agent. He's a, he's a high grade coach in terms of what he's proven. He played in the man coached in the Champions League final only a couple of months ago. I think there were people at Chelsea who voiced concerns about the clashes he's had, with higher, the hierarchy, the people he's worked for at previous clubs. Yeah, you know, he fell out fell out with people at Dortmund. Obviously, ended badly at PSG as well. That doesn't yeah. go unnoticed at a club like Chelsea where. The, the memory of Antonio Conte and how that all ended is still quite fresh for a lot of people. Um, but I think in terms of pure coaching ability, yeah, he. I don't think you could have done much better. I know there was Allegri as well, but there was always the sense, particularly with um, Kai Havertz and Timo Werner in this squad and the, the, the kind of, kind of di direction they've they've gone with in yeah. terms of squad building, they were they were always going to go German. Um, but yeah, I think he was good. I think another person they would have mm. seriously considered had he been available would have been Maurizio Pochettino. But of course, the timing wasn't right on that. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah, You know, you yeah. said um, Liam, with, yeah, um, PSG the way up. the way the, the way say. the yeah, you know, you said like the way um, Tuchel plays now is uh, it's I don't know what the word is pragmatic. You've you, you've got a lot of flair players, especially the ones you've bought recently. I mean, you have Birch, you've got Mason Mount, uh, and you've got Zayac. Can can you can you see any any of those moving on because of the the, the, the way they play? Uh, can he fit them in? Yeah, it's almost a war on wingers, isn't it? The, yeah. <laughs> the system that Chelsea are playing right now. Um, yeah. I I mean, I think long term, if and. Again, I have to caveat this with the fact that Tuchel has not been wedded to a particular formation in his career. He he is pretty versatile um, and he, he does genu generally like his teams to be able to switch systems even within games. Um, but that's not what we've seen at Chelsea so far. We've seen him very much stick to this wing-back system with those just those two creative midfield roles and, and that's it. And that's mm. that's narrowed the selection spots, hasn't it, from three to two. Yeah. Um, or in some cases, Lampard was trying to play four of them um, <laughs> at any one time. Yeah. So that it is going to get harder for a lot of those players. And also the fact that Tuchel has moved Timo Werner into one of those spots and made it pretty clear that he doesn't see him as a number nine either. So now you've got even more competition in those pos positions. And like Christian Pulisic's not getting a ton of minutes right now, even though he's fit. Kai Havertz... <laughs> got an unfortunately timed injury just when Tuchel came in. So he's playing catch up, but he's not played much. Ziyech has played the last couple of games, but before that he wasn't really getting a look in. Mount, interestingly, is just as in indispensable as he was before. Yeah. Um, he's a top Hudson player though. Yeah, he is. He's excellent. Um, yeah. hudson Adoy is getting game time, but only at wing back, not in those not in those creative spots. So he's actually now competing with Reese James. Um, so this system has, has shifted the, the squad dynamics in interesting ways. And I think in the long term, yeah, there will be, I think there will be winners and losers of these battles, mm. but you, but you have to add to all of this. We don't know how long Tuchel's going to be here. <laughs> you know, he's, yeah. he's, or he's any on Chelsea next... manager. In that exactly. Exactly. I mean, this is part of the issue that Lampard had, last summer was that he you know he was making it clear there were certain players that he didn't consider part of his plans but if you are those players and you know we we heard retrospectively that Chelsea were already um or people around Chelsea were already talking about if Lampard has a bad run he'll probably be gone mm. if the players are hearing that they're not going to be so keen to leave are they because you you're thinking I can probably outlast this guy and the next yeah. guy might like me and yeah. that could be the same. With, that could be the same with Tuchel. Now mm. it's always been um, an, an issue yeah. in Chelsea, and that's but, happened, uh, isn't it? That's happened, isn't it, with with Tuchel? Because he's brought in Kante's come back, as you said, Alonso's come back. Um, 
someone's come back who's Rudiger. Totally, Rudiger's Rudiger, come back. Ru- Rudiger. Yeah, Rudiger. That, that was it. Christensen. So, Christensen. Christensen. Christensen's yeah, come back out of him. nowhere. Yeah, yeah. So, so, and, so is that exactly what you just said there is, is, is happened, yeah? But it also, in, in, in a way, it's sort of bringing the whole lot together in, a sort, in some sort of weird way in my head. But because you've already got the players that were getting some game time, so they would already feel like they're a part of it. And then you're bringing back the players who were sort of outcasts. And may, maybe he's, it seems... One thing I do see is he goes around to every single player after that game, whether they like it or not, he's giving them a hug, slap on the back, yeah. well done. You're part of the team, whether you're on the bench, you're part of the team, whether you're on the pitch. And I think this kind of thing, if they're buying into it, will, will help him in the long run. Because th- that's where you could kind of draw a similarity to, to what Jose Mourinho had back in the day. Was It was that team, it was that team ethic. It was like them against us, we're, we're here together as one. And uh, if Tuchel can do that, then no, I can see him. See him. I can see him doing well. We've got to remember, it's not his team yet, and and he is just trying to find his feet. He's had a great run so far. Um, what what do you think they need to bring in 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 the summer? Yeah, it's tricky. I think that they're very much of the mind that they need. Um, well, Erling Haaland, <laughs> as, as every other. <laughs> As every other elite European club uh, is is currently thinking, yeah, we'd really love Erling Haaland. Um, yeah. I think they 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 do think that the 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 lack of ruthlessness in the final third is an issue, and mm-hmm. getting an getting an elite number nine, you know, Haaland would be the dream because he looks like he could be the number nine that defines the next ten years of European football. He looks mm-hmm. that good, um, but. They they do they do probably need that type of that type of player unless you have confidence that Tammy Abraham is going to become that type of player and mm. all the signs are at Chelsea at the moment that people yes. the the key decision makers at the club do not have that confidence in him becoming that type of player which is a shame because mm. I th- I think I I like Abraham um, a lot as a player and as a guy mm. and I actually have a higher opinion of his potential than I think a lot of people do but mm. it just depends on whether his timeline to you know to maximize that potential matches up with mm. the timeline Chelsea have got because yeah. having mm. having spent all that money Abramovich wants to win now he doesn't want to win yeah. in two three years he wants yeah. to win now and mm. I think you said it there it's, it's about timing uh, Tammy Abraham needs to play games he needs to become ruthless that's what that's what he's missing at Chelsea is that ruthless streak. Is if you get if Tammy Abraham's in front of goal, you know he's going to score. You might as well get ready to get back in positions in the halfway line. But it doesn't kind of seem that way. But to get that, he needs consistent games. He needs to have that confidence. He needs to have that swag. And he's not going to get that if he's in and out, worrying about whether he's going to be playing the next game or not. Mm. Um, so and especially if he's. Look, players aren't silly. If, if he's hearing rumours that Chelsea are pushing for Erling Haaland, in the back of his mind, he knows that he, it's it's mm. maybe he's, he's, his future's not there. Yeah, he wants mm. to start, doesn't he? Uh, uh, hey, Brams. He, he wants to start as a as a main striker. Uh, I can't I just. I like him. He's a good player, but I, I can't see him be that being that main striker uh, as Liam said, like an elite club. Like Chelsea, there's been rumours with him that he's been leaked with Everton, but then he's, you know, that's he's got, you know, Dominic Calvert Lewin there. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's difficult for Everton him. already have that player, don't they? Yeah, they have yeah. Calvert Lewin. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 if I was Everton, I wouldn't be. I wouldn't dream of dropping Calvert Lewin. He's been exceptional this season. Do you? Do you mm. Are they? Are they going to push for uh, Erling Haaland? Is, it, is that, that a move they're definitely going to be going for? Well, it's my my colleague Simon Johnson at the Athletic. He he ran the story for us that that Chelsea are very very keen on Haaland and they will push as hard as they can. But ultimately, um, he is a player that is going to have his pick. Mm. Yes, yeah. mm. he he he's so coveted now. He, he's going to be coveted enough this summer. <clears throat> if he doesn't end up moving, he'll be even more coveted next summer when his yeah. actual release clause kicks in yeah. and his price yeah. is yeah. price is capped. You have to add on, add on top of that Mino Raiola's commission, so it'll be an expensive deal regardless. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, the, the one that's the that's the one kind of thing that's been a stumbling block historically is that Chelsea haven't uh, been particularly enthusiastic about the prospect of doing business with Raiola because they were burned badly 
um, by the Romelu Lukaku deal. They thought they had him um, and they felt they they felt stabbed in the back essentially that Raiola then went to Man United and uh, and and kind of yeah got them to to pay even more and steered the the perception at least was that he mm. R- Lukaku had been steered to the to the club that would benefit Raiola most. Um, you don't think Ferdinand's yeah. going to do it mm. then, Liam? You don't think Ferdinand's going to be the man who's going to get you 25, 30 goal season like well, he I did in Germany? That- like he did in Germany. I think he can be a lot better than he's shown right now because I think, you know, there there have been some of the more fatalistic comparisons have been like Torres-esque, but I don't get that sense with him at all. Yeah, it's because a bit harsh. I, mm. Yeah, I don't get that sense with him at all because it, you look at Torres had had injuries by the time he got to Chelsea. Um, and then when I remember watching him during that time and there were, there were entire stretches of games where he didn't look like he even wanted to get into positions because he was scared of scoring. Or oh, scared of missing. Sorry, he was scared yeah. of you know getting the chances. Right. Um, I've never ever got that impression with Werner. He never ever hides. Um, no. he's, he's he creates danger constantly, and and that's why that's why Tuchel's still playing him because even if he's not scoring, he is adding value to the team because the the other mm. team have to worry about him for ninety plus minutes. He's always trying to he's always trying to move into good spaces and um, running behind and. And yeah, he was desperately unlucky not to. Uh, he took that goal brilliantly against Liverpool. Um, in, yeah, in a pre, yeah. pre, in a pre-VAR age, that's just a great goal. Um, mm. So yeah. I, I don't have any concerns about him. But the thing is, Tuchel doesn't see him as a number nine focal point. He sees him as the guy playing off that guy. So I think Chelsea as a club are still looking at a number nine. Uh, apart from um, habits needing to take some tips off Leon Goretzka in the summer to, to bulk up a bit. Do you think Tuchel can, can, can get the best out of him or get him back to anywhere near what we saw at um, Leverkusen? Goretzka's muscles have muscles, don't they? It's, it's just <laughs> incredibly... But so does yeah. Lewandowski and the rest I'll of them. Yeah. I like, I've liked that player for years, Goretzka. <laughs> yeah, Even Gnabry looks like Shaqiri. <laughs> <laughs> mm. But um, yeah. yeah, no, I think, I think Havertz... You know, everyone, everyone at Chelsea, from the owner on down, and I stress the owner because you know Abramovich was involved in Chelsea's pursuit of Havertz, and was def- definitely keen on bringing him to the club. So when that's the case, you can be sure that Havertz is going to get every chance, and there will be every incentive at every level to put him in the best position to succeed at Chelsea. And it, he's got the talent. You've seen what yeah. he's done in Germany. Um, he, he's a he's a supremely talented footballer. Mm. Uh, part of the issue is that what is actually his best position? Um, he, you know, he's played well in so many different roles for Leverkusen. And uh, I wrote a piece recently saying he could be, you know, Tuchel is beginning to talk about him as an option as a false nine, um, which I think could which actually is not work. Far off what he was playing. Yeah, it, well, it was certainly what he was playing at the end of his career at Leverkusen. Yeah, uh, at the yeah. end of last yeah, season, he, he scored a lot a of 10. goals. His best position yeah, that, was a ten, and the thing that's we what he past, says. Yeah, it was playing him on the wing all the time and trying to shoe horse Mason Mount and Kovacic in, and that's what his problem was. You weren't getting the best out of Timo Werner because Havertz wasn't behind him. So that when if say Haaland does go and you've got Havertz in the ten. You have Werner on the wing and you have Zayic on the other wing. Trust me, Thomas Tuchel will get them literally clicking. And every week, it'll just be goals, assists, goals, assists. That's the thing with Havertz. He's not much as a worker from the back. He will come back and... I watched him at Leverkusen because I really wanted him for Arsenal. For me, under Thomas Tuchel, it'll be like Mesut Terzil in his first year and his second year with Arsene Wenger. He plays just like that. He is the next Ozil. That's what they were naming him. And the way that he, he just basically he drifts in as a false nine and then he takes two people away. He always takes two players away, which cre- which creates more space for the left and the right and your number nine. He is an, an exceptional player. And it's hilarious how so many people have written him off and say he's crap yeah. and he's, he's a waste it's, of money. It's, it's, it's You're not seeing first, the best of him. You're not only, seeing the best of him. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, it's his first season, so it's hard. It's, it's a bit harsh to judge him on, on that. Mm. He's, as, as, as Liam was saying, where's his best position? Lampard was shifting him all over the place. 
he needs to get settled. He's still very, very young. Um, as when he had COVID, and he had COVID as well, quite badly. You know, yeah, long COVID. We're, yeah. we're still lear- we're still learning about the like how how the uh, kind of long term effects can be for sportsmen, for elite sportsmen. Mm-hmm. We don't really know. We're only a year yeah. into this. Yeah. Um, and yeah, by all accounts, he he was you know it bed bound for more than a week. And it took him quite a while to to get back. And then that's why I think the most recent injury that he had was particularly unlucky because he was just starting to look physically good again. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I remember the goalie. I mean, it was the only good thing that Chelsea did in that game against Man City at home. Uh, but the goalie set up for Hudson Odoi in the last minute really looked like he, physically he was getting back. There was a, a really good burst of pace, great cross, um, and then he was out again. And and yeah. Tuchel wasn't able to use him, so I th- his time will come. Uh, he's, he's very very young, and like I said, when you when you have that price tag and you have that level of equity um, at the club in terms of so many important people at, at, at Chelsea have a a big interest in Havertz being a huge success. So mm-hmm. I, th- I think that he will be given every chance. Yeah, yeah, he will be. Um, Liam, thank you for coming on tonight. Brilliant, brilliant quality. It's quality having you on. Um, we'd love to get you on again at some po- some point to talk about Chelsea. Um, yeah, thank you again for coming on. No worries, guys. Pleasure to be All here. Right. And, yeah, have a good night. All right, Cheers. take care, mate. Thank you. All right. Uh, that, was Liam, that was Liam Toomey. Uh, you can go and catch him on, on, on his Twitter page. Um, we'll put the, the, the links in... Uh, in the description, I'll even add. I'll, 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 actually, I'll add the, the links uh, to the bottom. Boom! Now, actually, two seconds. All right, let's do this. Liam to me from the Athletic. All right, there you go. You can catch Liam to me at the Athletic. Tell you what, if Chelsea get Haaland, oh and my there, God, it's game over. There is his. Uh, there's his Twitter handle. Go and check him out. He knows his stuff, as you can see. Excellent, excellent on camera. Brilliant. Um, what show we've had so far? All right, let's 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 get onto the transfer roundup. Boom! 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 All right, Steve, sit here. we go. Here we go. Oh, I'll start from here. Um, Liverpool is set to make a 26 million move for Udinese winger uh, Rodrigo De Paul. Uh, Barcelona are willing to part ways with French international. Uh, Antoine Griezmann for around £50 million. Uh, Omar Richards has passed his medical with Bayern Munich uh, and is signing a four-year deal with the club. Manchester United uh, are looking to tie down a centre-back uh, Eric Bally on a long-term deal. Uh, Real Madrid are prepared to sell Rafael Varane to Manchester United and they, are, uh, they do not feel that he's going to sign a, a long-term deal. Um, Steve, you've got a little bit of Man United, haven't you? Oh. Oh, Muted him. Oh, yeah, uh, Andre Silva, uh, Iron Track Frankfurt, uh, mentioned him last mentioned him last week. Um, there's no interest from Arsenal, um, which is uh, which seems to be going about. That that's uh, I've been told three people now. There's no interest from Arsenal. Um, we, we, what was also happened is we're expecting Man United in. Uh, who, how can I put it? That was the best way to put it. We, we were expecting Man United, who, who were offered, they were offered in January, to go back into him in, in, uh, in the summer. Um, the worrying thing for United fans is that what Andrew Silva was that I found out yesterday, he was a plan B if, uh, if they couldn't get Haaland or Kane. Mm-hmm. Um, now, that, that could be that could tell a story that could, uh, you know, that's in, in, in the socials, that's getting Manchester United fans, uh, a little bit worried. And, and because they haven't, um, they, they, they turned it down in January that what is going to have to now, they're going to, looks like they're going to have to pay more money. The, and the, the Atletico Madrid are after him as well, aren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah. He don't, he don't, he don't, he don't strike me as a Atletico Madrid player, but um, I mean, the Man United fans are the cover, 
I say low. It was a couple that I've spoken to are worried that if he comes, but um, he he scored um, thirty one goals in um, forty six appearances for Eintracht Frankfurt. So the guy's pretty prolific. Um, uh, Jerome, you had a little look at him, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, st- yeah. Steve spot on. He's recently he's, he's been really prolific. Um, so. I don't know if you you might recall he he was at Porto originally, and mm. there was talks of him being like you know the next the next best the next best thing there. And he went to AC Milan, um, and was a bit of a flop there to be honest. Um, only scored I think a couple of goals, had a, had a couple of loan spells, um, but in terms of the way he plays, I I don't think he's probably suited to the prem, Premier League. Um, he's one of those that he's not the quickest. He's not the he's not the strongest. Um, he's quite clever with his movement uh, in terms of positioning, getting in the right place at the right time. And as Steve said, like when he gets a chance, he's he's quite clinical. Uh, takes a lot of penalties as well. A lot of his goals this season have been penalties. Um, he's really highly rated by Ronaldo. He said Ronaldo, the um, Portuguese Ronaldo, said that you know when when he retires from Portugal, like they'll be in they'll be in good hands because like they've already got a great striker in Andre Silva. But, um, yeah, it's, it's uh, big, <laughs> big shoes to fill. <laughs> no, I know you're talking about one of the greatest players of all time. Mm. Cheers, mate. Like, big pressure, big pressure. The yeah, talk is yeah. like silly, like 75 million for him as well. Now, asking. this is this, 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 this is yeah. where the problem could be because if you start paying 75 million for Andre Silva, who mm. I'm not saying is a bad player, he's a good player, but as Jerome said. Is he Premier League, or is we, mm. would Man United be buying a Helga Postiga? Or it just seems like every oh. every five years there's a there's a there's a player from Portugal who's meant to be the next big thing, mm. and then once they move, they're not quite that big thing. Yeah. Mm. Those and goals, the ones that, go on. those, those goals that he scored were in the Bundesliga, though. Those those, those, those stats. That mm. I read out there were the Bundesliga. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it it wasn't like the Portuguese when he was when he played for Portugal or yeah. uh, or or Porto. Those those stats were from Eintracht Frank when he played for Eintracht Frankfurt last year and and what he's doing for them this season. Mm-hmm. So the Bundesliga is a different cup of tea, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You know. So if you are going to buy him, you, you, well, if I was going to buy him, I, I'd be looking at the Bundesliga because the defenses are a lot difficult. Uh, they're very similar to the Premier League, um, but then again, you know, Werner's not actually it off yet. But you know, he, he, I think I think he will. I think I think Werner will. Um, but yeah, as I say, them stats are from the Premier League. Your opinion, uh, uh, Bundesliga. Your opinion? Uh, do you think it would be should where Man United need to go? Do you think it's the right signing? Who's that? Who's that for me? Me or Steve? Steve, Steve first. Yeah. I I can't. He don't strike me as a as, as their main striker. When when you when you you've heard that he's been connected with Harden <coughs> and Kane. Mm. Uh, but then again, I might I might be you, you, you know discrediting uh, on Andre Andre Silva there. <laughs> yeah, I, I know, but it's it, it's not really discrediting. It's it, would you class him as an elite striker? The the two that you've said there previously. I mean, Harlan's mm. still young, but I mean, he's got everything you can see that he, mm-hmm. that he's that he's going to mm. be elite. Um, mm. Harry Kane is an elite striker; he's world class. Mm. Can, no, can you put, did, can you two, put the, Andre Silva in that bracket? The two, the two United fans that I spoke to weren't weren't happy about it. Would, yeah, you know? would you be happy, Jerome? No, I, I, I agree with I agree with the <laughs> United wrong. fans. That, I agree with the United <laughs> fans that Steve spoke to. Um, yeah, I, I don't think he's <clears throat> at that level where he's going to make like a big difference to United's team. Mm. You're um, perceiving. You're be, you perceiving. Yeah, I think United can do mm. better. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's, if it's, Man United have got any balls about them, they'll go to Tottenham and take Harry Kane. Premier League proven. You don't need to worry about will he adjust to the league. It's Kane. Yeah, it's 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 easier said than done when you're dealing with Daniel Levy, though, isn't it? Mm. Oh, I know. I know what you're saying, but I'm saying yeah. like, would you, you wouldn't waste seventy? I've never seen this silver. Never heard of him. I've never, never, not even watched anything. I thought you were talking about the Wolf striker. 
No, 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 no. no. Andre, no. Andre, That's the only silver that I know. Andre Silva. Andre Silva. He's, he's a good player, but I, I don't think he's. I don't. He's. He's. For me, he's not. He's not elite, and I can understand why Man United fans would be worried. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't go as far as to say saving because I mean, once you get past Haaland and Kane, it, it, it's not the, the the level down is is a drop, but it's. There's, there's, there's them, these players are scoring goals everywhere. That these players mm. are scoring goals. People are scoring goals other than Haaland and Kane. So there's other players mm. out there. But mm. I just think where Man United need to go, I think that that step with um, Andre Silva is not a big enough step to to, to, to catch up with City. That's my mm, personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. Instead I mean, of man, Silva, man... I would rather go and get Ivan Tony. No, they would Man United to go crazy if, if that happened. Yeah. That, 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 that you can't, uh, Man United fans would not be happy if you got a player from the Championship, no matter what his goal scoring record is, to mm-hmm. take over. Like they got a Garlo, they had a Garlo. Like they'd probably rather have a Garlo than Ivan Tony. Because like, what what is Ivan Tony going to do better. for, for Man United? <laughs> what what? It, 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 it still it still goes back to my point of saying, is that going to bridge a gap for between Man United and Man City? No, nowhere near. So there's not, then, then, then what's the point? What's the point? It, seems, it, seems, it seems to me Man United ain't in any rush to to win the next title next year. That you know that they seem to be doing things the right way, and I like the way they're doing this thing with the with the youngsters. And and they've they've had a thirty million pound um, bid rejected from from Barcelona um, yesterday for uh, someone uh, Jerome and Kieran might know because you know they might have had a look in the guardians he might have turned up in there sometime and his name i can't pronounce the the, the first name it looks like ix mariba uh oh, and he's, yeah and he's a barcelona center midfield player and man united room for him they've had a 30 million band um put back chelsea were after him when he when he was 16. uh red bull leipzig uh they they were well in for him um but uh the as soon as they, as soon as they got in for him, they Barcelona put on a, a, an hundred million pound uh, release clause um, to his name. I mean, he's playing in Spain, obviously at the moment for Barcelona. Uh, yeah. Sorry, play- Steve, what was his name? Sorry, mate. I'm sure. I'm sure Jerome had him in his. Um, um, yeah, we did speak about. Yes, him. yes, yes. You did. You did. I, yeah. I know his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the second Guardian 20, uh, six, whatever it's called. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the yeah. second one. But we might be able to weigh each other's, uh, my opinion, and Jerome's opinion then. <laughs> uh, but he's playing, in, he's, he's playing in Spain at the moment. He's playing under something called the Catano Agreement, which is something that helps African Caribbean players when they, you know, when they move on to other clubs. It, the passing over is a lot easier. But the trouble is that Germany ain't part of this um, a country that's part of this agreement. So any any transfer that goes to Germany would be awkward. Um, oh, okay. So so that that that's so the the, the Man United thing um, would probably be more of a thing. It, it's I mean he's playing he's played for the B team. Uh, he's paid he's he's training with the first team at the mo- this moment now. <clears throat> I, I took a look at him. Um, and I thought I think this 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 kid's something else. Yeah, could you could you remember could you remember um, anything on him, Jerome? I think he was. I think he might be the one that was billed as like the next Pogba. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he was. Yeah, 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 yeah he was. Yeah. He that was. Makes, yeah. That makes sense, mate. That yeah, makes sense. Yeah, he was. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. he might be on like a bit. He might be on for someone that hasn't really played much in the first. I think he's on like some decent money as well. Um, I think that probably might be the got to get rid of him. Yeah. Possibly, because yeah. they're in trouble. Yeah. yeah, but it looks like Man United are going in, in, in for another one. And going by all the other ones that they're going in for, they're getting them. Uh, but he, he looked a good player, as you say. Pogba is he does look like a Pogba. He's built like Pogba. Yeah, uh, he's, he's eighteen years old, and and he's even he's even got that silky little touch like Pogba as well. So he, he's he's strong. He's you know he's well built. He's you know, you wouldn't want to go for a tackle with him. He's, he's very, very, 
very strong and and he's got that silky touch as well you know that little flick and that little turn that little Cruyff move and he's got all that as well to to with it so yeah I can see why men United have gone in for him yeah yeah um uh, Everton are interested in in uh, Stuttgart youngster Cialis Wam Wamang Kula Kuka. Uh, how wrong was I there, um, Jerome? Um, I've got Robert Brown. Is that name? <laughs> 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 what the hell? Ah, um, yeah, you know, nah, yeah. Spot, spot on, spot on. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna repeat it because uh, right. I'd probably get it wrong. So yeah, how you said it was a uh, spot Thank on. Thank you very much. Yeah. So this, What's this is a. So this is yeah, Stuttgart player. Um, so within three years, he's gone from playing basically the fifth tier of French football to the Bundesliga. Um, so he's really jumped like a long way in a short space of time. He was um, up until 2019. He was playing for a team called Paris FC in the second okay. tier of French, in the second tier of French football. Yeah, yeah, that's, um, that's and, then, that. and then went to Stuttgart. So he's originally from the Congo. Um, six foot two. He's had a really good really good start to this season he scored one in two in the league um one of these goals is i'm sure you've you've all seen it Do you remember george weyer scored a goal for ac milan when he basically ran from the edge of his own box yeah, 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 yeah. It's, it's a little bit like that um very powerful and quick dribbler sort of difficult to stop once he gets going um super super quick actually he's sort of clocked one of the quickest times in the in the Bundesliga. um he's a sort of player that looks like he could have an impact in the Premier League, um, the way that he plays. Um, I think physically he wouldn't struggle at all. Um, so, yeah, look, look, so, yeah look, look, looks hot. Looks a good player, yeah. yeah. All yeah. right, thanks for that, Jerome. Um, Juventus have completed the signing of on a permanent deal of Weston McKenney uh, for €22 million. Euros. Um, Stan Kroenke could be forced, could force... Mikel Arteta into rethinking his transfer policy policy after a hundred and eighty two million pound mistake. Um well. Um Steve, you've got some news on Man City as well. <clears throat> yeah, always Man United, Man City, uh, but then uh, there's uh, there's always things happening with any clubs, aren't there? Um we all we all know that uh um they want Haaland um to to replace Aguero. But that, but that wasn't their first choice, I was told two days ago. Their first choice <clears throat> is someone who we put as our first choice um, uh, last, um, when was it? Last summer. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is um, Marti Laura Martinez. Martinez. Yes, yes, uh, yes, he, yes. He was he was the one that we, we, we said that that was the one that they wanted all along. And it mm -hmm. has now came up again that, he was the first one that, that, that they wanted. So, well done, right. boys, for that. Um, but, but obviously, now that's become more difficult um, to get him. But uh, don't, sorry, don't Inter Milan need to sell because their owners um, can't get money out of China? Is that still the case? Well, good. Yeah, because Carlo told us that, didn't he? He told yeah, us yeah, that yeah. They, they, they was in a they're in problem. Yeah, yeah. so... Yeah, keep your eyes out for Martinez. Right, him back up on the wall again. Um, we yeah. crossed his, we crossed his, we crossed his name out. Uh, now we've got to get out the magic marker and put him back up. But for me, uh, that makes more sense. That makes more sense <laughs> as a City player because mm, um, yeah. he he seems more like a City player. He's 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 got that little bit mm. of, of a difference. He's he can drop in. He can, he can play. He's Whereas, where's Harland? He's very, Harland's a, 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 a monster, a beast. Mm. Uh, Alan Shearer on steroids. Is, is that yeah? Is that is that working for Man City? But the Martinez one is is yeah yeah. That for we, me we, we've, we've, all, we've all we've all we've all said we've all said Harland, haven't we? Uh, well, mm. no, um, Prime Simon said Harland, but, uh, we all we all we all pretty much agree that you know that Harland wouldn't be no that <laughs> wouldn't be a bad signing for Man City. Um, bad signing but, for anyone. But due, but, due, but due to the way Martinez plays, mm. uh, and due to what I've been... I, well, I, I'll carry on for what, what I'm going to get, and then I'll come back to it. Uh, but what it is, they don't just want one player, they want two. Uh, and one of them, they want to get a young player. And there's five players that's on the list, and I've, been, and I've literally been given the five players. And that is Jelfi Licks, who we all know mm. very well. 
Yeah. Uh, the other one is Trinchao, who I can't even pronounce it because I'm a fit. Fernando Trinchao. Well, I can't even <laughs> get me words out. No, no, no. Do you remember one of our first ones, uh, um, uh, Reyes yeah. came on and spoke about him. Yeah. The other one is Anthony. Um, the other one is Sebastian Esposito, who, who we know well. And yeah. the other one is Kulaveski. Now, that okay. is a five, that is a five on the list that Man United have got. Uh, what they what, the, what they want to do, they want to bring in two. That is also one from the the main strikers um, yeah. that, that would suit the culture, which mm -hmm. you know, which would suit um, the country that they're in and the country that they're coming from. That's mm -hmm. what Man United are looking at. Sorry, Man City. City, look, City the, the, yeah. That's 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 what they're looking at. Um, yeah. And uh, alone. Is, is, is something that they would not accept for any of those five players. It would, it's, they, these would have to be by, which is not surprising because Man City don't loan, do they? Yeah. So, um, who, who top two? Jerome, you had a look at uh, Trinshaw and uh, Kulaveski? Uh, yeah, Kula, Kulaveski. Uh, Trinshaw, were, were you talking about um, Francisco Trinshaw? Yes, about Francisco Trinshaw. Okay. okay, fine. Yeah. What wonderful player! My um my my brother-in-law, future brother-in-law, is a big Barcelona fan. What watches a lot of him. Um, someone that's got a lot of promise. Um, mm -hmm. so he he joined them in the summer from Braga for about thirty-one million euros. And whether it, he's got a he's got a big buyout clause about five hundred million euros. Cool. Um, le left-footed, uh, he's already got six caps for the full Portuguese side. He he reminds me a little bit of. A bit of Pedro, now the the uh, old Chelsea and Barcelona player. Yeah. Maybe not, maybe maybe right. not as direct, maybe not as direct as him, but very fleet-footed. Seems seems that he's got a little bit more to his game than Pedro. Um, excellent dribbling ability, like the ball sort of glued to his foot. Um, yeah, he looks um, he looks a really good player. A bit of a combination of a winger and a playmaker, like rolled into one. Um, great player. And the other guy that you mentioned, Dejan. Kuvalevsky, this this guy looks another another fantastic player um, at Juventus. So he was he was born in Sweden, um, and he plays for the Swedish national team. But his parents are Macedonian, hence his name uh, Kuvalevsky. Um, he does get a lot of minutes. He does get a lot of minutes for Juventus. He, he starts about half of their games, but he's pretty much always involved. Last season, he won uh, Serie A Young Player of the Season. I reckon wow. people. I reckon people probably watch Juventus now. Um, and they probably watch the game. They've probably never heard of this guy. I've seen this guy before. And they think, God, he, he looks good. Who is he? And it's this guy, Kulewski, uh left footed, six foot one, uh, attacking midfield slash like wide player. Always amongst the players that sort of cover the most amount of ground. Uh, great trickery, acceleration. Very, very busy. Um, real top player. Um, yeah, both both of these guys, I, I think, are excellent. Both get their thumbs up. <laughs> Typical Man City, Jerome. Typical. Can yeah, you, yeah, Can you see yeah. why they've gone from? Can you see them at Man City? Yeah, they, they're 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 a very high standard. Kudovski, For me, yeah. he's like um. Also, he's got that sort of gritty work rate as well. Yeah, yeah. He's got that, which is which is a little bit different. Kind of uh, weirdly, a little bit like Harlem, where Harlem's just like <laughs> muscling the people around. He's, he's got yeah. that element to his game he's as got well. The, the, yeah, he's not. He's got the physical side to his game yeah. for a winger as well, which is yeah. sometimes rare. Shows how good City are actually run. It just, mm, yeah. it, to go for this detail and go into these sort of players, yeah. it just yeah. shows you that they don't just look at the best player and go, "Right, we'll have him. him. Don't worry about yeah, money. Yeah. We'll have him." Yeah, yeah. I, it's I, I, like, right, I like the bit where you know the, the little bit of information that I got where that I was told that the Men City look at the culture of the player. And whether he can fit, and I mean, I'm sure all clubs do that to a degree, but um, I'm yeah. not sure they do now, Steve. Though I know it's, I know it was definitely a thing back in the day. I know it was definitely a thing back in the day. I've heard managers speak about it, but I, I've, 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 we've seen some weird signings happen, like, and so I, I'm sure some managers do, but I'm not sure everyone does. Mm. I'm not yeah. sure everyone does. If you, if you look at some lower league clubs, though, look at like what City are doing, where they've looked towards 
a player for the future and see if it would actually help them, not just go out and join a bidding war with somebody else. Mm. Everton did that very well. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, who, who, out of like those, those what eight players? What, what two would you would you pick? What two would you because? <clears throat> I mean, yeah, Martinez, Martinez, I mean, and the one from Barcelona. I mean, Joe Felix mm. is is always one that's going to be hard to 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 turn your nose up at because of the talent that he's got, and maybe we haven't seen fully what he can bring, and I maybe we won't see that fully at Atletico Madrid due to the style that they they play. Um, yeah. so it's not as expansive and open which I think he needs for his game um, yeah uh, which uh, team the, this, which the list team is, the list is solid if I'm honest like it's, 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 it's a tough one to choose it's a tough one to choose but I, I would definitely have Jao Felix and I like the look of uh, Martins as well yeah I mean the summer for Men's City is going to be <laughs> it's quite from, yeah. from from my side and our side. It's 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 quite exciting because you never know what, what you're going to get week to week. What's well, gonna, yeah, and then we can't we still and we still can't rule out the chances of of Messi, can we? Um, no. If if if, well, no. if yeah, so if certain um, presidents get in, then yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's it's, it's a spot to be looking for. Um, but, was that was does that it? Did you have more? No, there was there wasn't much. More. I did have. Oh, I had um, the, the the I might as, and I brought it out when um, Liam was on. I did have the fact that Everton um, was was, was rumoured to want Toby Toby Tammy Abraham's, but we we spoke about it and we said that Tammy Abraham wants to be first choice. But Tammy yeah. Ab- Toby Abraham is, is not happy at Chelsea. But you know it 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 doesn't take a, a brainiac to work that one out. Um, mm. And I think in the summer. Tammy will definitely be on his way, and he'll be on his way to a Premiership club. Um, who paid West Ham would be a great. I think West Ham would be a great signing for him. Uh, mm. I think he would be a great signing for West Ham. Mm. I mean, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, he would. Week Chelsea in, week also, out. Yeah, what? Chelsea also looking at Darwin Nunes. Um, it's yeah, come up. Player. Yeah, and the the player who, who we. Um, we we sort of kept an eye on for for a few months, uh, and in the end, it, we followed him all the way to to Liverpool, uh, and that's uh, Tizzy Mikas of Liverpool, to the Greek player. Oh yes, 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 yes. Yeah, well, he's he, he's leaving in the summer. He's just not getting game time. So, and he hasn't as he's like to can't remember no, he playing one game, and he'll be yeah. leaving in the, he'll be leaving in some sort of that. But, but what what was he what was was he expecting to come in and play over? I know he's probably expected more game time, but was he expected to play over Robertson? Hmm. I, f- I don't think that's realistic. You're talking about one of the, the players who's played the best at left back over the last what two or three seasons. Mm-hmm. Well, so we had that conversation, didn't we, about Donny Van der Beek? Well, you know, when players came and, and they sit down with but, the manager, yeah, are they told the players... something different? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? All right, thanks for that, Steve. Uh, Inter Milan have failed to pay Manchester United a uh, bonus for Romelu Lukaku. Um, this, in turn, means that it will force them to pay immediately the remainder of the fee. Uh, United are asking for Martinez and Mila or Mila Skrida. Very interesting. Uh, Leicester City have renewed their interest in long-term target Ishmael Jacobs of Cologne. Jerome, what's this Ishmael Jacobs saying? Yeah, so he, I'll tell you who he reminds me of, this Ismail Jacobs. He's a hes a 21-year-old left-back um, that can play on the wing as well. The way he plays reminds me a little bit of... Do you remember Julian Gray he used to play for Birmingham? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. He yeah. was quite yeah. versatile on the left. Yeah, yeah quite, quite mobile, yeah. Uh, like versatile down the left, hard-working, speedy, yeah. skillful. Um, he's got a few caps already for the German under-21 team and was nominated um, for the Bundesliga Young player of the year last season uh, came through Cologne's youth team um, doesn't get a lot of goals but I guess that's to be expected if he sometimes plays at left back um, but yeah if, if he's playing for the, you know, the German under 21 team he, he can't be um, can't be too shabby and he's getting nominated for um, you know young player of the year as well yeah 
I can't believe you pulled out Julian Gray. I, I'm, I'm yeah. astounded. What a, what a shout. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know why I'm buzzing. I'm like, yeah, he's actually a decent player. Great shout there, Jerome. Great, yeah. great shout. Yeah, yeah. Not bad. Like, around that level, not a well beater, but like, honest, humble, yeah. hard working, yeah. rating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Sheffield United owner uh, Prince Abdullah uh, and manager Chris, uh, Chris Wilder are a disagreement over transfer policy. Yeah. Um, I think. I think um, so. I mentioned this a couple of weeks ago when you said um, the, the the chairman, the, the owner, actually wants to get rid of um, uh, Chris Wilder, but the players would, would have said no. They want him there. Yeah, because he's um, uh, he's demanding. He's not demanding. He's asking that he needs he needs two midfielders. He needs another centre back, and he needs a, a proper striker that can. They know they're going in the championship. They well, already know this. But well, he what he admitted, needs is then positions and the owner of Sheffield United is unwilling to back Chris Wilder this summer. And that's why things are going off at the minute. And what the guy from Sheffield United has, has told me is the fact that basically, because it's a standoff with the owner and Wilder, the owner is now trying to force Wilder out. But there's, there's only so one demanding. winner in this. There's only one winner in this, surely. And Chris. we have to know this. He's the owner. <laughs> no. like it's, but let's get realistic, yeah? Like, get ready well, for the no no, no rest of years. How, <laughs> no, no matter how much Chris Wilder is loved, you've just seen it with mm. Chelsea. It's a results business, yeah? And you have to take sentiment away, yeah? And it's a results business. If, yeah. the, if the owner is not happy and wants to get rid, and they're, getting, and, and they're at loggerheads, yeah? We, we we saw we saw um, Mauricio Pochettino get Chelsea to get Tottenham to a Champions League final and consistently in the top four for the last three seasons get sacked as soon as as soon as games started going against him. So yeah. it, so mm. it says mm. it says all you need to know about who's the winner in all these battles. It's the, it's yeah, the owner. The honor. But, you, but um, you see you see what it is. You got you got. I know it's two ends of the table, but what you've got. It's it's the same thing where both both owners are getting from Tottenham and Sheffield United are both just getting above their stations. You know, yeah. like with with Tottenham, it's the degree that they think that oh now we're in the Champions League final that we should win the title every year. So we're sacking him. We're going to get someone else in. Mm-hmm. And as far as um, poor Chris Wilder goes, um, because they finished tenth, they think that they're going to finish tenth every year. Um, Mm. And that's the problem with having chairman and people upstairs who haven't got a clue about football. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then again, the same thing's exactly like you said, Kieran. If you know, if if Wilder gets the sack and and Sheffield United win their first ten games of the season, the player players and the fans won't give monkeys. Yeah, exactly. I'll get us exactly. on publicity as well. I'll take my camera. I'll watch all. <laughs> I'll watch everything at Sheffield United for as long as I ordered. Go and interview. Have your say. Have your say. Yes, very good. Go and interview Chris Wilder as well, so that'll be that be a good one. Um, <laughs> Manchester. Oh, may you not? Have, this is spoke about. No, no, you haven't spoke about this one. Um, Manchester United have been scouting by by Leverkusen centre back Edmund to Soba. Jerome, you're well impressed with this guy, aren't you? Yeah, I'd I'd say this is our transfer <laughs> roundup player of the week. Our Yay! star. Player. <laughs> new bit. That's a new line. He's making it up as he goes along. I love it. Absolutely love it. Jerome. Transfer Roundup, Player of the Week. <laughs> Jerome, is this, your, is this your best week ever? Absolutely gassing me up here, Jerome. Yeah. You've had some good flares to look at, haven't you? Hit me with yeah, it. Oh. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah. By Leverkusen. 22 year old centre back. He, he doesn't come from a massive footballing nation. He's. He's from the he's from Burkino Faso, right? But what a great prospect! So he, he signed in January 2020 uh, for Laser, for Leverkusen from a team in in Portugal's top division called um, I think Vitoria. Um, so whatever you want from a centre back, this guy's got this guy's got it. The thing that stands out um, for me though about him is he is. He is unbelievably calm for a centre back. I, I would say he's like the Berbatov, Berbatov mm-hmm. of centre backs. Um, technically, very good, um, very 
I think he's about six foot four, long, like long, ne- long legs that nip the ball away from attackers, and he can really like spray the ball out wide uh, very well as well, like what Van Dijk, um, like what Van Dijk does for Liverpool. Um, I-, I think this guy, this guy looks excellent, um, and yeah, being linked with United doesn't doesn't surprise me at all. Um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Qu- quality player, quality. Top signing for Man United, then, yeah? Yeah, yeah, I, I think so. All right, yeah. thanks for that, Jerome. Um, Arsenal have, uh, oh, Arsenal are looking to, to tie down young Scarlet Kiddo Taylor Hart uh, to a new top contract. Uh, you're a fan of this kid, aren't you, Jerome? Yeah, yeah, he only sort of came, I guess, um, Arsenal fans were only made aware of him, I think, earlier on this season when there was a video of him that, that came up online of him training with the first team. Um, and he sort of stood out from that little, you know, three or four minute clip. But he's a he's a boy at Arsenal fan, like a lot of the you know guys from Halen. Been with Arsenal since he was seven. Um, sort of an attacking midfielder, has played for the under 17s England. Bit bit similar to Leroy Sane, the way he moves, uh, very upright but smooth on the ball, can weave in and out of players. Um, eight, Eighteen, so maybe. If he signs this new contract, maybe next season could see him perhaps, you know, in like a Carabao Cup squad, something like that, yeah, or um, sure. or maybe out, maybe out on loan somewhere, perhaps. But um, very, very interesting uh, player. Yeah, definitely yeah. one to watch. Definitely one to watch. Yeah. Thanks for that. Uh, and, yeah. and Arsenal manager Mikel Arteta has told French international midfielder Matu Guendouzi that he's played his last game for Arsenal. Will be sold in the summer. Um, Manchester United. Um, oh yeah. We've already spoke about this one. Steve spoke about it earlier. Man United looking at um, Eintracht Frankfurt forward Andre Silva, and they have to potentially compete with uh, Athletic coming for a signature. And that is all we have for tonight. Boom! What a show! Thank you very much for Nathan Ellington for joining us. Thank you very much for Kevin Parker for joining us. I thought that was brilliant. That that Man Man City Man United bit. I thought it was quality. Um, and obviously Liam Toomey. Um, Brilliant, he was when he came on, and uh, we'd definitely love to get him back on again as well. Um, thank you very much for joining us, everyone, tonight. Thank you very much in the comments section. Fully loaded there. Got Omar, got Gareth Lewis, very happy that Man United beat Man City there. Got Peter <laughs> G, how are you doing, Peter? Mihai, thank you very much for joining us, Mihai. Oliver Martin, thank you very much for joining us, Adam Wade. Yes, Wade, how are you doing, brother? Um, <laughs> thank you very much for joining us, uh, you not semantic. Thank you very much there. Big up Kevin and, and Nathan. We've got a fan there. Thank you. Um, da, 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 da. Uh, Lily White Blue. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, all things Arsenal. Thank you very much for joining us. Boom. And obviously, thanks to the panel for joining us. Thank you very much tonight, Simon. Cheers. Uh, thank you very much tonight, Steve. Yeah. Cheers, Kevin. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Uh, thank you very much for joining us tonight, Jerome. Absolutely yeah. on form. Pleasure, pleasure. Cheers. Throw, 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 throwing in his throwing in his own player of the week. Now, now you know you're gonna have to carry that on for, forever. Now, <laughs> if you if you don't say if you don't say who your transfer yeah, roundup yeah. player of the week was, people are gonna turn around and go, "Well, who's the transfer roundup player of the week? What, what yeah. is Jerome thinking? What is in his head?" Uh-huh. So yeah. you got to let him know. <clears throat> and people yeah. in the comments, if you think you've got the transfer player of the week, <laughs> you give it to the drone. <laughs> and we'll see if he gets it right. <laughs> oh, just Jerome, oh, not all of oh, us. Just oh, Jerome. Oh, if you've got a player that you want Jerome to check out, if you think a player's been underrated, undervalued, or not even been spoken about, send it our way and Jerome will have a look at him. But, but bear in mind... Your heart could be broken when Jerome says, nah, this player's <laughs> rubbish. But he'll say it in the nicest yeah. way. He'll be like, oh. <laughs> No, you know what it, you know what it is? It's the lean, the, you see, you haven't noticed it. It's the, the lean back of the chair when he's rubbish. Oh, is <laughs> it? Oh, is <laughs> it? It goes like, ah. It just goes, nah, no, 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 there's no, ah. There's no, ah. There's no, ah. <laughs> No, ah, no, there's no comes it's, it's, it's just the lean back a little bit. Just it's a slight <laughs> lean. Ah, no oh, is it like he's trying to get out of the room? You know what it is. Yeah, right. it's like, no, it's when his eye, it's when his eyebrows goes up and he just smiles. Looks like oh, a it's, it's, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's like, 
no, 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 good, man. no okay, if, man. If, if, every week now he's going to be a bag of nerves. Every time a player gets goes over Jerome, would you, you know? Would you think we'd be like? Nah, this is. I'm, I'm going to get a chair. Like... I'm going to get a chair that's got a back that don't move now. So I can't. <laughs> <laughs> it's full off it, like Del yeah. Boy. Hey. <laughs> uh, All right, thank yeah. you very much, everyone, for joining us tonight. Um, obviously, thank you very much to the guest. Please like and subscribe, um, share whatever, get it out there. Um, we're building. Peace out. Stay safe.